One of my ideas well, that, that we're not doing because it's torture would be just Hank sitting and staring at a camera without saying a word for five hours. I'm definitely that's called that's called that's called buttons. Sunday night in the part of my take studio. That's true. <laughs> you think you do that, Hank? I could do anything. You, you could do anything. <laughs> you are you're a smart boy. On today's part of my take, we have two very special guests: the Wagner brothers from the Magic in Studio, Mo and Franz. Great interview with them. Good to get some NBA players on the show. Uh, we are going to talk Monday Night Football. Jake Browning is elite. We are going to reveal the Low Man Trophy finalists, uh, which is coming up because I know they did the the Heisman this week. So it's time for our award. Who's favored to win the Heisman? Uh, Jaden Daniels is right now, uh, awesome. which Hank did say mission accomplished. So we just got to be careful with that. There's no okay. Shot. All right, well, listen, we're not even we're in the talking show about yet. the. F- Game, the game, the game. You're right. They're right. You're right. You're right. We're we're listen. We're not even we're not even in the show yet. I can't text. No, no, we're not even in the That's show insane. yet. What game are you? This talking is about? And, you and, were live texting about Oregon, Washington. Yes, that wasn't right. mission accomplished because I needed Oregon. Whatever. All right. Ne- neither here nor there. You needed them to win the game. Mission accomplished. Well, neither here nor there. If you can sense Hank's tone, he's ready to fight. Because we also are going to talk about the 24-hour stream that will start uh, today at 9 p.m. And Hank has come. He's come with his brass knuckles. Central time. He's come ready to fight. Ready to smile. Ready to smile. Ready to smile. Yes. I'm always ready to smile. So we're going to get into all of that. Hank stormed into the studio today. Oh yes. Again, we're not even in the show yet. Hank. It's been a while. We're not even in the, the show yet. Started, wait, wait. It's okay, bad. the gaslight has started. So it's going to be a great show. And Hot Seat Cool Throne and FAQs. Before we do all that, Chevy, there's a new family with unstoppable grit, and they're the official partners of the Pardon My Take family, and that is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. The first ever heavy-duty ZR2 joins the franchise to make Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with a full lineup of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventures take you. With exclusive Multimatic DSSV dampers, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views, Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2, a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head to Chevy.com, check out the Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official trucks of Pardon My Take. We are a Chevy podcast. We love Chevy. If you're thinking about becoming a truck person, go head over to Chevy.com, check out those Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official trucks of Pardon My Take, the best trucks ever created. That is what Chevy does. So we love Chevy. Chevy loves us. Go right now to Chevy.com. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Wednesday, December 6th, and Jake Browning has arrived. He is elite. I got a BFT. question. Is Jake Browning him? He might be. We watched Monday Night Football. Everyone expected the Bengals. They were 10-point underdogs to just roll over, and then Jake Browning said, no, 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 not so fast. 32 for 37, 354 yards, and a Bengals win and a Trevor Lawrence injury and it looks like the entire AFC picture is now up for grabs. Yeah, was it four out of seven quarterbacks that are currently in the AFC playoffs? They're on their backup quarterbacks. I think I yeah, and I think in the league, I think it's fourteen teams are now playing backup quarterbacks. Sam so Howell keeps climbing up those standings. This 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 league this this year. If you're wondering, like, hey, why is everything kind of fucked up well uh yeah we got a lot of backup quarterbacks going right now yeah the I th- right now it's the it's the jags mm-hmm. we don't know how long uh the steelers we don't know how long the browns for the rest of the season the colts for the rest of the season i would count joe flacco as a starter though he's a backup he's got starter pedigree and the- but yeah it's a, it's it's a bloodbath out there actually if you look at the standings right now in the afc you could make the argument that eight nine and ten correct could beat Five, six, and seven. Eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And eleven. Yeah. yeah. The Texans, they the should... Broncos, the Bengals, and the Bills could like 
it's just crazy because this is how the NFL season goes, where you go into the season, you say the AFC is a gauntlet. The AFC is going to be incredible to watch. All these great quarterbacks. Now we're sitting here in the first week of December, and everyone's injured, and the Chiefs have caught their fourth loss, and it, now it all switches to is the NFC the real gauntlet? Is the NFC the, really the actual conference this year? Because, uh, yeah, I mean, if you had to do a power rankings of teams, the NFC would have, what, three of the top five teams right now? Yeah. I think they would. Yeah, 49ers, I think, number one. Yeah, 49ers, one. Then you could maybe go Ravens or Eagles. Yeah. And then, you know. Cowboys in Cowboys there. Cowboys are somewhere in there. And then, I don't know, maybe the Chiefs. I mean, I, the Jaguars. Dol Dolphins. Dolphins. I, I'm very high on the Lions. Dolphins. Yeah, the Lions defense. Lions Eagles. is us. I want to just say real quick, Lions fans, listen, we have, we have been very supportive of the Lions. It is not Lions hate to say – can't trust the defense yeah that's a statement of fact I still think the Lions will possibly win multiple playoff games but saying the defense is not good is a true statement of fact there is no bias there's no hate it's just a fact the Lions don't have a defense that will the Lions have a defense that will make every game a nail biter I think the Lions can outscore almost anybody though yeah that's the thing which is why I love these Lions I feel like Dan Campbell he can put his foot on the gas and just be like, he can will his way into having a tough defense. Defense. The he can defense just, you know what he'll well. do? He'll just challenge his defense. Yeah. You know what I did this week at practice? I challenged my defense to step up. Yeah. And then they'll step up. But yeah, the Jaguars, uh, it looks like it might have been a lucky break with Trevor Lawrence. Can we it, get him a cart? Yeah. I don't know what Jacksonville's doing. He was walking all the way to the, the locker room. That's the thing is like Jacksonville, I think amongst any city in the USA, Jacksonville, Florida probably has the most golf carts. Yeah. And they didn't use a single one on Trevor. He said he wanted to walk to the training room. Why? Uh, I don't know. I guess he wanted to show you his tough. It was so sad was, when they showed him back in the tunnel and it was like five minutes later. It's like, here he is. He's still going. Yeah, he, he walked home last night yeah. after the game. But apparently what happened was, this is according to Uncle Chaps, he hurt himself and then he told the guys on the team, like, I don't want a cart. I want to walk. I want to look tough. At that point you need to be like, no, we're going to get you a car. You've had – give me your keys. You've had yeah. too much. We got a driver for you. You'll be fine. Um, Shout out Trey Henderson, giving him a quick prayer right there. I blame – In the moment, that was actually very classy. The, the biggest winner of last night was that poor equipment manager, Waterboy, on the Jaguars yeah. who cost them a timeout. That drive yeah. was cooking. He runs onto the field. I don't know why he ran onto the field. They charged the Jaguars with a timeout. I believe it was the first play after that timeout, Trevor Lawrence gets hurt. Yeah. You can't tell me that Trevor Lawrence gets hurt if that guy wasn't on the field. Butterfly effect. But apparently apparently it's a high ankle sprain. And I've got to take that I don't believe but you gonna get the surgery? Is he gonna get the Alabama ankle? No tightrope. Okay. I'm, he I'm hearing no tightrope. I just wanna doesn't get doesn't want it enough. I wanna get to this take before Colin Coward or Danny Cannell does. Okay? Yeah. Trevor Lawrence needs to know in that moment. He can't act like that's a season-ending injury. Yeah. I would have walked off. I, you know what? I would have stayed in the game. With the way he sprain. got up and then he went back down. He did get – it was weird because it was a high ankle sprain, but he also got, like, f folded in half his knee. Right after the high ankle sprain. Yeah. It, and now the Jaguars have to go play at the Browns and a good defense, and they have the Ravens after that. Pete Prisco might be sweating a little bit with his Jaguars – uh, thoughts, although they finished the season with the Panthers and the Titans. So I think the Jaguars still go to the playoffs, but that sucks. It felt like it was the first time I think Jacksonville had a Monday night game in like over a decade. Yeah. Um, it was also the first time the Bengals won a Monday night game on the road in like 20 years. Um, Prisco's kind of walked back that take, though. He says that even with Trevor, the defense doesn't look good enough. Oh, no. Yeah, they did. Jake Browning was incredible. He was good. And I know that they have weapons, but Jake Browning, like, good for Jake Browning. He probably made, I don't know, 10-plus million dollars being able to be a backup now for a very long time. Yeah, it was a big night for him. And I think we misjudged Jake Browning on the on the ground beef and honey comment that he made, that he only eats ground beef and honey as his diet. Yeah. That's actually kind of cool. But it's also not even, like, it's it's good. That was my point. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it tastes good. It's not like a big sacrifice. But it's kind of, I don't know, it's very primal. It's like, if you see me in a fight with a Jaguar, pour honey on me. Yeah. Uh, the the stat is from Stathole, uh, that was the first Bengals Monday night road win since 1990. It was very weird seeing the Jacksonville pool at night. Yeah. I can't remember the last Peyton time. Peyton was very it. uncomfortable with them staying on it. Yeah, I yeah, liked it. Yeah, he was it. like, get it off. I enjoyed it. Get the pool off. Uh, there was also... 
the matter of uh, a near tie at the end of the game. Yeah. And it feels like the Bengals tie more than any team in recent history. Yeah. They just give off tie vibes. Oh, well, it's the Donovan McNabb game. Yeah. And I think the most tie, famous tie ever. I think they tied one in England, too. They've had some pretty noteworthy ties recently. Yeah. This would have been another one. Did you know, because I looked it up, the Jaguars have never tied a game. Oh. They're the only team in the NFL that have no ties. That's on pretty the cool. Do you know who leads the league in ties? It's got to be an old franchise. Yes. Because they just did ties and they were like, that's the game. Giants? They didn't have overtime for yeah. a long time until 1972. Um the Bears. Okay. You know how many ties the Bears have? 100. They have 42 ties. Yeah. I mean, they tied crazy, games back in the day. Here's the craziest part. They don't have a single tie since 1972. Yeah, so it's all pre, pre-tie ties. Yeah, so the Bears, you could say, like, the Bears don't have a tie either. Yeah. The t- ties, yeah, it is it is pretty crazy that, like, you know, pre-1960s, they would just tie games and be like, like, thinking even about, like, Michigan, Ohio State playing. Yeah. They would just tie. That's the end. And be like, that was it. Guess next year we'll find out who's better. Good game, everybody. Like how? How is that possible? That would that's the most un-American thing of all time. I agree. Um, we also had Christian Kirk uh, smash his own nuts. That was tough, Mister Belvedere. I know that it says it's a groin or abdomen, but watching that replay, I think he just squished his own nuts. That's think, why you got to sleep with the pillow in between your legs. They called it a core injury. Yeah. That is your core. Your yeah. nuts are the very definition of your core. It's everything. It's your it's your power. It's your life. It's your virality. Uh, the interception that Josh Allen had last night was very hilarious. Too. Yes, that was the definition of too cute. Zach Taylor got a little too cute with it. Yeah, they you got Jake Browning play. out there dealing. Dealing. 32 for 37. And he it wasn't only short passes. He was throwing the ball all over the field. Now, part of that is because I think the Bengals have a pretty good roster. And T. Higgins, he's a big difference maker too. And you can just get the ball in Jamar Chase's hands and he'll do crazy shit with it. But, yeah, Jake Browning looked good. Jake Browning had um, – so Trevor Lawrence has been in the league for, what, four years now? Jake Browning had uh, – the th- it would be the third most yards Trevor Lawrence has ever thrown for. So Trevor Lawrence really? is only throwing – his highest game is 368. He has a game of 364, and Jake Browning yesterday threw for 354. It was a great game. Jake Browning might be next up. It was a really good game. Yeah, and the helmets looked awesome. So, yeah, it was a fun game. It's fun to have these games. It's like, hey, it's a reminder. You think that game's going to suck on paper, then it was awesome. And and now we have the Patriots-Steelers, and we got to just suck it up. What if this game is awesome? Yeah. This game actually could be – it could be so bad that it's fun. Yeah. It like could Broncos be. Colts last year. Bron- yeah. Broncos Colts it was sucked. so bad that it was memorable. It sucked yeah. for about three quarters and then it got fun. It got funny. This might be fun the entire time because it's going to be so bad. It's it, yeah, it could be very funny. Um, before we talk about Thursday, because we're going to have that stream as well. Memes, Zach Wilson. So that's a thing. Zach Wilson. If people missed it, Zach Wilson, uh, Robert Salah said that he's thinking about going back to Zach Wilson, and now Zach, there's a report that Zach Wilson's thinking about not playing because why would he? Yeah, and then Aaron Rodgers also said that that report was horseshit. Oh. Yeah, Aaron doesn't the trust media. the media, but it, wa- it was an anonymous source, so you have to take that with a grain of salt. Um, if, if Zach Wilson doesn't want to come back and play, that's some bullshit right there. That's bullshit. Like, they rode with you for a long time. They're trying to go back to you. You, it's not like they mistreated Zach Wilson. Mm-hmm. We can fairly say that, right? Like there are some players where you can make an argument they never really got a fair shake, whether it be like coaches being fired, uh, thrown under the bus by people. Zach Wilson was put on top of the bus. I think he's just he's thinking like they're probably going to cut me, so I don't want to get injured. But yeah, you, Robert Sloth stayed with you for a lot longer than he should have. Yeah, probably Rob- to his own detriment. For sure, for his own detriment. Yeah, he was. He had every opportunity to throw Zach under the bus. After every game where Zach would do something like new that was a complete, completely brand new fuck up for him, Robert Salah would be like, you know, there's some things that I think he could do better, but you know, I, I think he's the kind of guy that's going to get in the film room and work on things and we won't make the same mistake twice. He always said like, he had the nicest way of saying, yeah, Zach Wilson sucks. sucked up. Yeah, yeah. He sucks. So if, if that report's true, uh, I mean, I don't really think he had much of a career lined up as a backup. He doesn't give me backup vibes. Your backup can't have a bandana. But you know it's the NFL, and there's always a coach who's like, I can fix that. Yeah. And they're like, oh, well, his arm talent's still there. You got a bunch of, you got a bunch of Billy footballs running around as OCs being like, I could get that. I could get the most out of That's that. That's a very scary thought. Yeah, but it's true. Like, yeah. everyone thinks, you know, you always – it seems like you always get at least one more shot. Yeah. Yeah, if you're if you're what was he second? He's second, second overall. Second overall. 
there'll be a team that brings him on. But like I don't, even Josh Rosen got a couple other bounce back spots that he didn't he didn't get a lot of like playing time, but he at least got a look. Yeah, guys get looks. So yeah, memes. What do you think? Do you need the Do you need the Zach Wilson spark? Well, right now it's just a total disaster. They cut Tim Boyle today. Why? They lanced him. <laughs> they brought in Brett Ripon. Okay. Ripon. Yeah. So I think I I'm gonna guess he's gonna be the quarterback. This is so. This is so. He doesn't want to so, play. This is like they're they're actually. It feels like the Jets are running a fundraiser to see who will start a quarterback. It might as well just do that. Like, why not just have a fan giveaway? Play a game for the Jets as quarterback. Philly. Like the yeah. Movie, like the movie Invincible? Yeah. It does seem tryout. like make a wish. It's it's insane that they're – I mean, they cut Tim Boyle being like, yeah, we'll figure – we'll get someone else. Yeah. What, <laughs> I mean, you're where, already at Tim Boyle. Where is Colt McCoy? Where is Colt McCoy? What is Colt McCoy doing right now? And how, how does he not have this Why job? is it RG3? Oh, he wants it. Yeah, he, he wants, wants that job. RG three will take it. Yeah, it's actually I'm, ironic because ask him for Grit comment. Week twenty twenty one, Billy bought a Zach Dr- Wilson jersey at the Football Hall of Fame in Canton. Yeah, oh really? At the gift shop. Yeah, there was a Zach Wilson jersey in the Football Hall. Of Fame. He was a rookie. Yeah, he hadn't played yet, so it was yeah, like a big them. deal. Yeah, it's bad. I'm it's reaching bad. out to RG three right now for comment. Would you play for the Jets? I will update. He's gonna you. be like. Yeah, man. Do you, uh, Max? Also for you, Shaq Leonard. Yeah, Big Dom picking he, him up at the airport. That that was old. That was last week's picture when he visited. He picked him up from the airport. Ah, uh, so is Big Dom in 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 jail? Is he in trouble? I th- I'm pretty sure he was on Chris Long's show. Oh, he's wearing a wire. Was that not last week as well, or, oh, or that, earlier? That could could have also been earlier. I did. I think Big Dom might be in trouble because like the no. NFL is gonna. Well, I know the NFL is going to come for him, and then that might be, that might be the best. The thing Eagles might have to leave the NFL. Leave the NFL? Go <laughs> well, to the guess, yeah, you No, know, they're just going to – yeah, they're going go to like, go to the protection. SEC or something. I think it would be funny if Dom came out on the sidelines with, with like a whole new look, like a mustache. He could he's, in, off. he's in, yeah, witness protection program. No, because then he wouldn't be Dom. If he like came in looking like a nerd? Yeah. No. No, 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 no. You don't go- take – you don't take the you don't take the Italian out of Dom. You don't nerdify Dom. Yeah, Let's come go on. No, 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 no. This is Dom we're talking yeah. about. Uh, oh yeah, God, but text. yeah, Shaq Leonard, Shaq Leonard, big pickup. You need guys. He's a guy. Uh, text back from RG three. I said, would you play for the Jets hypothetically? RG three says hypothetically, yes. Okay, he's Robert, in. Robert Griffin III has agreed to play for the New York Jets. Memes, cool make the card. call. Yep. Why not do it, yeah, memes? I mean, why not? Let's just run it. There's see, no let's reason. See, let's see how weird we could get this season. Right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Bring Tebow back. Yeah. RG3, Colin Kaepernick, Johnny Jeff Manziel. George. Just do it all. Oh, Brett Favre. They're Fortles. releasing like everybody they signed during the preseason, too. This season is just an absolute disaster. I, I did Very see funny. Our friend uh, Steve Palazzolo from Pro Football Focus, he yeah. had a good idea, which is that there should be no trade that deadline for quarterbacks. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. You should be able – for the good of the league – you should be able to move some of the like. Imagine Kyler Murray could have stepped in. Yeah, on the Jets this year. I think. Did we talk about that like a month ago? I don't know. I think we did. But yeah, there should not be. There should not be because it would be better for the game. Yep. If we had that chance. Um, okay. We talk a little college football, uh, and then we got to get to the twenty-four hour stream. We're brought to you by our friends at Ourselves. Pardon my cheesesteak. We've just unleashed a menu that will have your mouth watering in no time. Hold on to your taste receptors because we're introducing. The stars of the show, the chicken bacon ranch cheese steak, the irresistible chicken tenders, and the monumental big cat combo. Whether you're a cheesesteak aficionado, a finger food enthusiast, or simply someone who values the art of comfort cuisine, this menu has something for everyone. Order now on pardonmycheesesteak.com, also available on Uber Eats. It's the best football food. Do it right now. You know what? Let's just listen. Thursday night's going to suck. Make it a part of my cheesesteak night. Let's all get some part of my cheesesteak. That's what we're going to get here. So part of my cheesesteak. Order now on part of my cheesesteak.com. Also available on Uber Eats. What's, um, a, what's this look, Hank? Did you want... Were, Hank's, was, Hank's was mad dog in me. Was the low man part of Hot Seat Cool Throne, or do you want to do it now? I think I think low man deserves... Yeah, I do too. It's so, yeah, time. we'll talk college football. Jaden Daniels is a finalist for the Heisman. It's he, Marvin Harrison, Michael Penix, and Bo Nix. Mm-hmm. I also liked that the Heisman released it and put out all their stats, and Jaden Daniels just has better stats than all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think all the votes have been 
cast so we i don't think media members are allowed to talk about no they aren't after they aren't so yeah. it's in god's hands now i think they should have invited sweat from texas you got to get one big boy up there yeah i mean jordan travis too they said it was such a big deal that he wasn't invited in Oh, you're going to do that, Jake? I mean, I saw it online, but it's yeah. true. Like, at least invite him. Yeah, no, yeah. He, his numbers probably weren't there to be invited. But uh, we know who's actually to blame for Florida State not getting in now. We found that out yesterday. Who? It's Jake's guy, Trump. Oh. Actually, it's not Jake's guy, guy, Trump. San, San, San it's it, it's <laughs> DeSant, it, Trump weighed in on it. Yeah. Trump weighed in on it and said on Truth Social, it's a really bad lobbying effort. Let's blame DeSanctimonious. I like that. Meatball Ron is to blame. And to be fair, I didn't hear Ron DeSantis say shit. No, he wasn't fighting. And, wait, is Florida is Florida State University, is that a school that's run by the state of Florida? It is. Who's the governor of Florida? DeSanctimonious. Meatball Ron. Should yeah. have said something. Little also, Senator Rick Ron. Scott released a statement, too. Oh, yeah. We're at the, the, this part of the, <laughs> the process is, is people just releasing statements and strongly worded letters. Um, I think they even actually, I think Rick Scott said that he, the, the state of Florida is going to give a million dollars to sue the NCAA, which will, I'm sure that's going to work out. Yeah. That's going to be like, like two days of lawyers. Yeah. That's and not, they're just gonna be like, all right, we got nothing. This is, I, I always love it when politicians weigh in like a week late on a sports issue Yeah, that their staff has told them that they should talk about because yeah. it's relevant right now. And they always like mispronounce the player's name, screw everything up. Yeah, what it did, was it? Ted Cruz said basketball goal, the basketball ring, maybe. Yeah, or something like that. I think was it Ted Kennedy that messed up David Ortiz or Manny Ramirez. Yeah, there's it's it's Hondo. It's bad. KG and Hondo. Whenever whenever yeah, yeah, politicians KG and try to get in the mix with sports, but uh, yeah, the FSU, um, the fans, I think are you know, we we said this on Sunday, but the good news is you can fight about this on Twitter forever. Yeah, and they are, and they should. They and you, should keep going. You should. Like, Keep doing it. A hundred percent. Use this as an opportunity if you beat Georgia to claim that natty. Oh, what, without a doubt. And, and we'll sell national championships. Yeah, no, yeah, we're we're in. We're fighting for Florida State. But um, and then we had the transfer portal, which I think there was like four thousand kids went in the transfer. It's, it's insanity. And there's also a little smoke going around Ohio State because they had eleven guys go in the transfer portal, including Kyle McCord. And then there's some reports that Ryan Day is maybe shopping himself to the NFL. Interesting. So that never works, though. No. The only time that's ever worked, Jimmy Johnson, right? Yeah. Who else? No, it's you can't you can't shop yourself. Or you're talking about college jumping to, from college to the uh, Harbaugh. Harbaugh, Pete Carroll, but he was NFL then and it, college. Yeah, he was then NFL, NFL first. Again. Yeah. But strictly like a college coach jumping to the NFL, I think the only times it's worked, Jimmy Johnson, and then you can make the case. We're probably Harbaugh missing too. one. We always do this to ourselves. Uh, Matt Rule. Matt Rule. Matt Rule. Urban Meyer. Yeah. Steve Spurrier. Barry Switzer, run, he won a, a Super Bowl. He did with Jimmy Johnson's guys. So yep. that was, yeah, a little asterisk there. Nick Saban. Joey Harrington said that Nick Saban, they were they were turning the corner. Bobby Petrino. They were ready to go. Bobby didn't. Bobby is the one. A lot of failed guys. He, he like, wrote it on a cocktail napkin and left it in the locker room being yeah. like, peace him out. Cliff Bill Kingsbury. Bill O'Brien, 52 and 48. But he was NFL first. Yeah, he was with the Patriots, and then he went to. yeah. yeah. He went to the Penn State and then he went yeah. to the Texans. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's tough. It's a tough jump to make. I I just want to go ahead and predict this. Uh, whatever team hires Ryan Day as an NFL coach will be a complete failure. God I, help their soul. It would be funny. I don't. I'm not rooting for the Panthers to to keep up this streak that they're on with Tepper. But it would be a Tepper move to just like forget his second to last mistake and go back to that well again. Give him a seven year contract. Be like boom, splash play. Yeah, look, we got we got the hot name that has just been dragged and can't beat. I mean, that that would be an all time coward move by Ryan Day. Yes, run away from Michigan. You can't do that. Isn't you have to stay. You have to stay and try to beat them. You have to go out on a win. Basically, you have to just figure out a way to cheat harder. Yeah, that's that's the name of the game in college football. Cheat harder, get better players. I mean, they already get really good players, but they got to figure. Yeah. Ryan Day, you can't do it. You can't do it. Um, okay, Low Man Trophy. Yes, the most prestigious award. Oh, we forgot Chip Kelly. He was great. Yeah, Chip Kelly was yeah. good for one season. Yeah. Remember he coached the Niners for a season? Yeah, that was People weird. Forget that. That was weird. But he was good on the Eagles for one season. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Low Man Trophy. It's the most prestigious award in college football. It goes to the nation's top fullback. Uh, I sent out the ballots over the weekend to get our finalists down. There are a lot of great fullbacks out there. And the committee is strong this year. The committee is very strong. Um, on the committee, I have received word from uh, Cole Kubelik, John Kuhn. 
We've got Aaron Ripkowski. We've got uh, Lorenzo Neal. Okay. Mike Allstott. Just a, a who's who. I like this. Of fullbacks weighing in on this award, as well as uh, Hank slash Tom Fernelli. Mm-hmm. And Andy Staples is on there, too. So we have we have our finalists right now. So I'm just going to read them down for you. Uh, the finalist for the Low Man Trophy, the best fullback in college football, Ben Sinnott from Kansas State. Okay. Ernest Crown Rower from Texas A&M. What a name. Max Bredesen from Michigan. Khalil Mullings from Michigan. Great names. Owen Burke from Air Force. Stone Eby from SMU. Hayden Large from Iowa. Eli Heidenreich from Navy. Heidenreich literally translates to Argentina. I love that. <laughs> yes. So we've got we've got some some good names. I think these are the most fullbackest names in the history of the Low Man Trophy that we're dealing with right now. I just actually had one more come in. Okay, it's another nomination for Ernest Crown Rower from Ooh. Texas A and M. So people might be asking, is he gonna is he got the leg up right now? He might. Well, I I'm, I'm leaning large just after hearing the names. Yeah. Yeah. Your a large size Heisman king. winner. That would be good. I mean, Hayden Large going into the season, I think he was the fr- the favorite just for the picture, and he's the guy that's like 6'3", 280, 290. When are we going to announce it? Um, so we could either announce it on oh, yeah, the Barstool the Bowl. Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the we'll pregame ceremony, yeah. we'll we'll do it. Last year it went to Hunter Lepke. He's on the Cowboys now. Um, so we'll announce it in the pregame for the Arizona Bowl between Wyoming and Toledo. Yes. I think we're on the air at around 4 p.m. Eastern time. Okay. December 30th. Nice. So that's going to be CW exciting. On Barstool.tv. Yeah. Um, all right. Should we talk about the elephant in the room? Max? That was mean. <laughs> Sorry, Max. That was mean. Uh, 24-hour stream is starting today, 9 p.m. Central. Uh, it's going to be on the Pardon My Take YouTube. For people who don't remember Mount Rushmore season, this was the punishment. Uh, Max and Hank will be going into a room, and they will not leave for 24 hours outside of bathroom breaks. What's the famous saying? Hell is other people. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're just going to be hanging out with another guy in a room. For 24 hours. 24 hours. There there will be challenges. There will be activities. None of which you were aware of. So you guys are very nervous. We we had a meeting yesterday. Okay, you're not nervous. Sorry, one on the record, not nervous. We had a meeting yesterday, and PFT can back me up. Jake was there as well. I said, quote, there can't be anything that is deemed as torture. That's what I said. I said there can't. There was ideas thrown out there, and I said, no, that's like borderline torture. We're not doing torture. We have activities for you guys to fill your hours. Yeah, with. you guys won't be bored. Right. We're doing things that like will be fun. That people will get have fun watching you do. So what is your issue? Who said there was issues? Oh, you oh, guys Hank, have so many Hank, issues. Shut up. You came you came in the room and you're like, we got some stuff we have to talk yeah, about with this. Go ahead. Let, let's hear it. No, and, and and this is a losing battle, and I know the gas lights are on, the lamps are, are fully stocked with oil and, and ready to <laughs> Is it oil or is it gas? Night, whatever it might be. Um And and this this might sound like sour grapes, and it probably is. But pick Jerome Bettis in the Rams. If I want to read situations where we're reversed b- b- before Hank starts okay, to complain see, this about is this, like, I, I want to ask what's the Hank. What I, what's I, I, issues? Want to <laughs> start talking. Oh, let me I want to read a quote from Hank. Hey, it's actually you talking because it's your own words. Um, this is from June twenty eighth, two thousand twenty three. I let my entire family down with today's Mount Rushmore. Mm. Simply have to be better. You yourself admitted that this is a self inflicted wound. Yeah, no, this is. I have no issue. We lost Mount Rushmore. I had Max on my team. I was really just anchored. Oh, there's nothing I can do about that. It is what it is. What about Again, the week that you, you punted the final week? What about the we week were, that you got too drunk one Friday and then you're like, I, I, I couldn't do it. What about the week when he went away and and I was the you dominated? Yeah. Great. That you, Hank's gaslighting you. Yeah, you Max, guys stacked. You were the, the worst. You guys stacked the deck. You you said, hey, me and every Hank accusation Hank from Hank entire, is a confession. Like entire pie chart of the fans of the show are fans of me and Big Cat. Let's be on one team. Pick you guys who just started on the show and Hank as another team. Wait, just started? Billy and I, G- Max we, have been on the show like, for we, nine months. We were last place for like three straight weeks. Yeah, this yeah is, and then Billy so started so, buying votes. So your issue is with <laughs> the Mount Rushmore. This isn't, no, I don't this know why, you, why you're that going at me right now. Yeah, this is, Hank is just shooting at everyone. Yeah. I'm not, no, again, like uh, this is. This. You're not. 
Again, he's the Mount not, Rushmore is the past. We lost Mount negative. Rushmore fair and square. You've attacked everyone in this fair. room so far. <laughs> this is square. a reverse Bukaki. Um, <laughs> the my again, and it is what it is. I'm I'm a is it I'm a soldier. Is it is what it is. I'm, I'm ready to I'm ready for battle. If we're not allowed to have our phones for 24 hours, my my only you will have that I would you have opportunities to win to your phones. Is if situations were reversed, I you guys would have rigged this. Yeah. So like I said, yes. Starting at 9 p.m. Agreed. is crazy. We Why? Have, because I have we have a full day of work. Like it's basically you're making us do a 36 hours straight. <laughs> like it's not if we were starting at a time where it makes sense for 24 hours and you can rest. You want to start at eight? I'm gonna be up all day. Why don't, don't you start at eight? Why don't you nap during the day? Yeah, you can I have you can work. sleep in the. In I the, have to do two days. But you of can work. sleep in the stream. But the, I like that's. You're allowed to sleep. He didn't sleep. think about that. No, I I have that. thought about that. I he doesn't I, want no, to talk about Are you sleep. afraid that you're I gonna snore. get a boner in your sleep? I'll definitely. I mean, everyone gets boners in their sleep. That's natural. <laughs> Uh, hey, what a bunch of VWs watching it get a boner to sleep. Okay, new rule. You sleep. have to sleep on your back <laughs> and only Facing in the boxer shorts. No, sleep talking is a concern uh, <laughs> for sure. But I just, it's, if the situation's reversed, it just, it's. Agreed. You guys would make this way easier for yourself. I do so. remember Grit Week 2020, the 24 hours we started at noon. Great. Yeah. Point, Jake. So what that's, time you want to start? No, it is what it is. It's no, just too no, late. No, it's no, just we like, can't switch. We can't switch. You want to start at eight? You want to start a little no, earlier? No, that would, yeah. No, the no eight would hurt us. Why? Get in there at eight because we have because we have to, we're not recording until after Thursday night football. Yeah, it doesn't make a difference. That doesn't make any difference because you would have the to record. Problem, after but you can come no, watch. You time. can come watch Thursday night football with us. No, but that means nothing. Hank's I'm gonna be is, asleep by Thursday night football, hundred percent. But we have to do the show after. <laughs> Correct. So like so it's basically you're, we're doing a forty hour, but that's fine. Street. That's fine. So you're don't not come in f- to sleep in tomorrow. You're not Hank. Yeah. What part advisors. of this don't you understand? At two o'clock, it starts at nine p.m. At on Wednesday. Two and then, o'clock, and then it ends. No, it starts at nine p.m. on two no, no, on I'm, Wednesday. He said. He said he has. I said you can sleep in. He said we have advisors. We have advisors okay. at two o'clock. Well, th- you're going to start this stream things. at nine p.m. on Wednesday, and then you're going to be done at nine p.m. On Thursday, you can sleep on Wednesday afternoon. You can sleep over the course of the night. I don't see what the problem is. You're going to make me be awake for the Patriot stream? No. You can go sleep. You can during... sleep on the stream. Yeah. I don't want to sleep on the stream. I think you're just. I would sleep. sleep on the stream. We could do a little. We could take a couple little snoozes. You have to. Why spoon. don't you just take a bunch of NyQuil tonight and sleep in? He already did that on I don't Saturday. Think that, no. My plan is yeah, I I, uh, I free balled some Nyquil the other night. It was a, I over overdosed myself balled. bad. Like Pretty I didn't based. have the cup. Yeah. Oh, you just guessed I just, it. I just did two gulps. Oh no, <laughs> two gulps is too much. So so your issue is I don't have you're any mad issues. about I'm the Mount Rushmore. I'm excited for smiles. I'm not mad about the Mount Rushmore. I'm really excited for the stream. It's gonna be a, a lot of chatting uh, with the chat, a lot of interaction. Would you guys like to start at eight so that way you can sleep during the Patriots game and then we can do the show at eleven? No, I would rather start at nine. Okay, okay. Why start do you? I don't understand why you want to start at. Eight. I don't. I'm trying to. I'm trying to help Hank in any way that he wants. See, help. the problem that Hank's found himself in right now is he he wants something to complain about. So when I, we start to no address complaints. his concerns, then he acts like that doesn't actually address his concern. I have no complaints. I have no concerns. I'll. My only point, which is v- valid, and Big Cat has has said it, is like if if you guys had lost, Correct. you guys would be doing like six hours and be on your. That's phone not true. Time. We would no. not be doing six hours. We'd be doing twenty four hours. And I would go without and my phone. S- and you still have a chance to win your phone. Yeah, we. I don't think we can be complaining until. Right. That's the point. Some, you're pre. I'm happens. not complaining. You're actually at doing all. the worst thing possible. I'm promoting. I'm excited. Here's a little tip. If you had not complained, I haven't. For the last 15 minutes, <laughs> I and you had gone into the 24-hour stream, and you realized that it was not bad, and then or maybe we do one bad thing, and you're like, this is bullshit. All the fans would be like, yeah, that is bullshit. Instead, you pre-complain. I have not. And the fact that it's going to actually be fun and fun to watch, you're going to look like a big pussy. Well, it's a good thing I haven't complained then. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Except when you stormed in here this morning, you're like, we got to talk about this. It's bullshit. Why are we starting at this We time? have very... Do you want to know one thing we're going to do? No. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Let's keep... Let's you keep know, it's a, it's a good teaser for the people to watch. Yeah, okay. You want to know one thing you, you're going to do? Mm-hmm. You guys are going to paint. You're going to paint some, some art for us. That. Okay, okay, so there I you go. That. Yeah. You, we already Max didn't know that. I want to award Can I bring a book? There will be reading. There will be reading materials for you. You're going to read, Hank? 
You could yeah. I want to do popcorn reading. There's with a that. chance you're gonna get a, 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 to play some video games. Like there's fun things that are involved in. This. There will be physical activity. Yeah, like you're gonna get a sweat. You're gonna get a nice sweat. You're also gonna get four meals from Chef Donnie. How about that? So, you complaining makes you look like a baby. We really I have gone, not. Well, it's going to be fun. Like I we, haven't complained. We I'm have excited. come up with all these things that will make it fun for people to watch and fun for you guys to to interact. I have one fear. I have one fear and one fear. Don't Max. No, hey, tell us the fear, please, Don't Max. Complain. Poop. Oh, blindfolded. Yeah, you blindfold poop. I don't know what that means, but as long as no, you get you guys. Like, will, I this was ask part of if I need to take an emodium before I get, no. Before this I go was part of the torture talk. There will be we, when well, there will be a litter box. There will be no there will be no restrictions on using the bathroom. Okay, it good. will be, but it's scouts honor. Like don't start going to the bathroom every two minutes. Yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, yeah. if you guys need to go to the bathroom, you have to go to the bathroom. We're not going to try to torture you. Like well, when you need with, to go, I'm, you have to. You can go. I'm fine with pissing in bottles, but uh, the no, poop you can is go. Pi- only, you can go piss worry. too. We're not. Be we're, careful with that one. We're not making this. We, <laughs> we literally, Max, we're making it so that Hank can't complain because we know that that's what Hank wants to do. So we we had this discussion. We're like, should we do bathroom breaks? No. If you have to go to the bathroom, you just raise your hand. All go right. to the bathroom. All right. I would never complain. Yeah, right. No. What's this is going to suck time? for you now because you complain. I haven't. That I haven't complained at all. It's going to be fun. Have a positive attitude about it, Hank, because this- I always have a positive attitude. I'm the most positive person on this show. Yeah, okay. What, what was your question? What is the golden mug tie-in? Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing golden mug Stella Blue on Thursday, so there will be a chance for people who want to buy uh, something on StellaBlueCoffee.com that day. We will give out a phone number that people can call into and talk to Hank and Max at some point in the stream. We have guests too. This will be all in the part of my take YouTube, correct? Yes. Yes. We have guests. I'm gonna get a tattoo. I believe the Twitch channel too. Yeah, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be so much fun. I'm excited. No, you're not. No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm very excited. We Max Max, stuff, credit man. to Max. He has not complained once. He I, gets the credit. I did I did question the poop. That was the only And I was, answered it. Yep. Would you think that's a good answer? Yeah. No, whatever great you need to great go. Answer. That was my only word. Hank, you've been in jail before. This is going to be so much easier. <laughs> yeah. It's it literally, it's not even a box. The original think, idea was going to be like a white box. You're in a podcast room. Yeah. We're going to put like a straight jacket on you. <laughs> why are you this why is you pointing at you? He's, he's, he's waiting for some, somebody credit to say something. Credit to you? Nice. For what? For not, not complaining? complaining? Okay. Credit to Hank for not complaining. In, how long were you in jail for? How many hours? 24. Which time? Oh. Uh, oh, there's multiple? I was in jail from like 3 o'clock p.m. We, we got arrested thinking we were going to get out the same day. We got in the car. They were like, yeah, you guys got arrested way too late in the day. We're not going to be able to process you to the morning. So we got arrested as early as you can get. So you have to be in there all day and knock it out to the next morning. So we were there from like 3 p.m. till 7 a.m. That's hard time. Yeah. Hard time. Diaper boy. I, I'm thinking Hank might have some text messages he's going to want to be responding to. It might be hard to explain mm. what you're up to. Tiffany can watch the stream. Yeah, in the chat. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, all right, what? You have one last thing. I one last non-complaint. Not no, not a complaint. A goal, excitement. Um, it would be sick. I don't know how we could do this, but like we have nine hundred seventy thousand on TikTok. Like nine hundred. What do we have on Instagram memes? Subathon. Uh, 946. 946 and Twitter. We have 905.9. Mm-hmm. 905.9. If there was ever, and I don't know what the what the add-on would be, but like I and and this this could be me volunteering, not complaining, volunteering. If we can somehow get all three to one million in the same stream, I would do another and, 24 hours. Oh. oh. Okay. Okay. What about a month? <laughs> you do a month? No. Oh, is that what you're asking, memes? Yeah, I don't know. Get you two to a million too. <laughs> One of my ideas that, <laughs> that we're not doing because it's torture would be just Hank sitting and staring at a camera without saying a word for five hours. I'm definitely that's called that's called that's called buttons. Sunday night in the part of my take studio. That's true. <laughs> you think you do that, Hank? I could do anything. You, you could do anything. <laughs> you are you're a smart boy, strong. Smart, it, good only, looking. Yeah, except for Win Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Jerome Bettis. You uh, lost the Taco Bell vote. Yeah. 
Although that was bullshit because Jake and Billy just did AI version. Yeah, that's true. And never I, eaten Taco I've Bell. never had Taco Bell. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's do Hot Seat Cool Throne. Are you processing? I feel like you have your processing face on. Excited face. Excited. Okay, great. Uh, Hot Seat Cool Throne brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. Coors Light helps you find moments to unwind. Big work presentation. Follow it with a happy hour. Some friends in a Coors Light. Weekend chores. Take Saturday off and hit the tailgate. Even if you don't have tickets to the game, whenever you need to hit reset, reach for a Coors Light. It's made to chill. There's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that is Coors Light. Mountains on the bottles and cans even turn blue when your beer is cold. That way you always know when it's time to chill. When you need to hit reset, just open a Coors Light. It's mountain cold refreshment made to chill. I love having a Coors Light on a Friday night. The kids are asleep. A little football, basketball on TV. Crack open a Coors Light. Chill out. Coors Light is the one I choose when I need to unwind, so when you want to hit reset, reach for the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Hot seat, cool throne. Hank. Uh, my hot seat, we just talked about it, was me and Max. Oh, okay. You want to talk about more? No. What, what did you have written down for your hot seat for that? Uh, that sounds like a complaint. It was just a lot of complaints. I have written down hot seat, me and Max. Okay. <coughs> Glad we covered that. Are you sick? Yeah, you, I'm recovering. And this is going to just... Whatever. Uh, my cool throne... <laughs> <laughs> it's so close to a complaint. <laughs> my cool throne is video games. Yes. It's right. been a big, big month for video games. I feel like Fortnite uh, has come back. They've had their higher, highest player you know, base ever. Warzone's coming out today. I'm missing out uh, on the Warzone premiere because of the 24-hour stream, but it drops on Wednesday. And then GTA 6 finally re- released their trailer yesterday. And, yeah, it, that's we've we've done it. We've gotten to the point where I can't tell if it's a video game or real life. Unfortunately, it doesn't come out until, like, 2027. Which but that that clip of the of the girl shaking her booty on the, on the car, I was like, is that real? I don't – it finally happened where my brain can't process video games in reality. When, AI. when GTA first came out, it was possible. It was unlike anything you'd ever seen. Like no other no previous video game even allowed you to come close to like breaking the law like that, except for maybe like Cruise in USA, but then GTA pops out and you're like you can just drive over every pedestrian, pick up hookers, shoot people on the street. It's awesome. Yeah, they're back. I feel like the original GTA is though, like you, it was impossible to like you'd get a crime and then you'd be arrested within a minute. It was so hard to evade the cops. Yeah, all those stars. Yeah, but then it got fun. Um, so yeah, video games are back. I'm excited for Warzone. GTA does look sweet. Looks so sweet. Gonna have to get in. Looks so sweet. Uh, my hot seat is amateurism. Ooh, amateurism on the hot seat. The NCAA is putting forth. A new I don't know if it's a, a regulation or just an opportunity they're they're making it so that um, certain colleges any college as a matter of fact can contribute up to thirty thousand dollars a year put it in a trust for, I saw this for 50 percent of their athletes so this is a big step towards getting players actually paid like paid by the schools that's the difference like Nil you can have a group of the biggest car dealerships in Knoxville, Tennessee get together, and they're like, hey, we've got $5 million for you to give out to anybody that's at the transfer portal. And then the the school will then interface with the player, recruit them. The NIL group will then be like, okay, we're going to pay you. Now this could directly come from the school itself. Nice. Which pretty much means like we're going to have, if you think that the haves and have-nots are bad right now, once this gets into place, it's going to be like, the major leagues, of right. College sports, yes, and then everybody else is the minor leagues. If this actually ends up happening, but I read a whole article and I got more confused. Yeah, the article I read was pretty much like if you're a rich school with a big endowment and a wealthy alumni base, congratulations, Texas A&M, because you're going to be congratulations. Yeah, finally Texas A&M will be able to afford It'll get ten wins to pay money to try yeah. to get wins. Uh, my cool throne is Jokic. Yeah, Jokic. Did you know that he leads the NBA in points, rebounds, and assists right now? Jeez. It's fucking insane what Jokic is doing. So good. I think I feel like we're in the trap of not appreciating how great Jokic is. Yeah, let's when get you it take, going. Take more time, Jake. Can you put a reminder? Uh, do a um a monthly a monthly day? reminder. What day of the month do you want it? What uh, wait? What number is he? That's fifteen. No. 
He's four. No, fifteen. Yeah, 15. I nailed it. All right, I know ball. Is that yeah. a good plan? Fifteenth every month. Fifteenth yeah. of every month, we should set aside to just say something to remind nice. ourselves that Jokic, Jokic is unreal. We did this he's a few years ago with Steph world. Curry. Yeah, he's yeah. the best player in the world. I know Steph Curry washed. We also will have an NBA preview probably in two months with Ryan Rosillo, so get ready for that. Um, yeah, Jokic is out of this world good. Did you see that thread that Rosillo put out the other day? Of, yeah, of him on the artwork for part of my take episodes, and Which, he gets progressively fatter yeah i don't know if we're doing that on purpose but it's funny if we are shout out trig i think yeah. tr is trig's doing it on purpose yeah i it's love that good work i love trig. that i love that <laughs> what we, 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 well, well he, we're still he figured me, it out i know he's, he's he said to keep it in he said to keep it in the dark for as long as possible well, i mean it's pretty obvious he texted yeah. me he te like months ago he was like i'm just gonna keep sending him <laughs> sending you fatter <laughs> pictures of him and just wait until he figures it out oh hell also, yes also still is in pod wars right now on twitter with oh. who well we have his back we can Cut this if we have no, to. No, no, we don't have to. Give it to us. Well, who's in Pod Wars with? Huh? Uh, Lebitard basically went at Spotify saying that they put out false numbers for the top 10. Oh, because they weren't in the top yeah. 10? Yeah. Oh, that's convenient. And then Rosillo was like... I All right. He, I got well, Rosillo's back. Rosillo says, do you guys really want to do this? Let me know. I'm retweeting it. We stand with Rosillo. Yeah, He's our guy. Well. Yeah, Pod Wars. So we're we're not in this Pod War, but we're on sta we're standing by and standing back. For also, us. we were number two, so it's like maybe we can. No, I agree. I actually agree with Levitard. They're yeah. suppressing <laughs> our suppressing our, our numbers, listens, and they're giving all our listens to <laughs> Taylor Swifties. Swift's boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. T you got to start dating Taylor, Hank, or Beyonce, or Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa's single. Yeah, Hank trying to do a feature. Hank, Dua, Dua, Dua Lipa, do Dua it. Lipa. Uh, okay, my hot seat is the Blue Jays because it came out that uh, Shohei, what was the exact tweet? It was something about Shohei visiting with the Blue Jays, and I think by Shohei's rules, the Blue Jays should be eliminated. They should be. I saw something very, very smart that they did here in Chicago on the way back from the airport. There's just a giant billboard of Shohei Otani listing all of his stats. Love that. And how good he is. That somebody very clearly spent probably probably six figures on in that prominent location just for the one trip that Otani's going to make from O'Hare Airport to downtown Chicago. I love that. Smart use of money. Ken Rosenthal said, Shohei Otani Blue Jays believed to have met Monday at Teams Florida Complex. See ya, buddy. See ya, Blue Jays. What? They're doing this for every... They, they just th did the same thing for the Dodgers. I think that that's See ya, gone. Dodgers. I think that's gone. I haven't seen one for the Cubs. I well well it was Nightingale but yeah Nightingale the Red Sox said, aren't aren't interested the N Nightingale said nice. that the Cubs uh the they believe Shohei's interest in the Cubs is waning which I think given Bob Nightingale's that's track a good record thing. that's a very yeah. good thing yeah. yeah his his Twitter picture is so funny yeah he always looks like a gym teacher yeah I think uh we should just report New York Yankees have also met with Shohei Otani put that out there that way Shohei will get pissed off and take them off the list ooh we should just do fake reports for yeah. the teams that he's visited yeah. So um, Shohei Otani has now officially visited with every team in Major League Baseball except for the Nationals, Cubs, Phillies, and the Red Sox. Yes. Um, my cool throne is the NBA in-season tournament because it kind of rocks. The Pacers beat the Celtics last night. The Pelicans beat the Kings. It was an awesome crowd. Did you watch the game, Hank? Well, just, I'm sorry. I'm reading. I'm trying to get in this podcast war. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what? That's actually more important. Uh, what are you talking about? Did you watch? The Celtics got bounced from the end season tournament. Yeah, no, I watched. Were you upset? Yeah. See, that means it worked. Yeah, that's it's good. So I, I have a question about the end season tournament. Isn't the courts are fucking disgusting? The yeah, Pacers, they are. They Pacers are court like legitimately is nice. Like we, I watched Surviving Barstool flip to that. It was just like this is disgusting. Isn't the entire season an in season tournament? To see who wins their division, but the players get paid. Yeah, it's working. It's working. I, I will say that I was I was critical at first. It didn't make sense in the beginning, uh, but now that it's more organized, it's like quarterfinals, semifinals, finals. It's like yeah, I want to win, and for the players, it's like yeah, let's win a million dollars. It's you're playing hard in November, which is the goal. Yeah, I, I like the point differential. The crowd uh, was awesome. Yeah, the crowd's good, and I liked I've liked the strategy at end of games when it's like yeah, you're winning, but you have to keep your foot on the gas because you know point differential is is a tiebreaker and stuff. So you just like blowouts, you're still trying to blow them out. Uh, so I, I've, I'm a fan. I, yeah, I'm the tournament supporter. becomes more real once the courts got to go once you see a bracket. Yeah. At that point, yeah. it's like my brain can comprehend this. And a seed. Yeah. And the score yeah. bug. Yeah. Little number. Yeah. And I was already thinking like t-shirts we would have sold, you know, in-season tournament champion t-shirts would have been funny. So you were upset. That means it worked. 
Yeah. Good. All right. So, yeah, in season tournament. All right, Jake, your hot seat, Cole Trump. My hot seat's Nick Saban. Uh oh. His phone number got leaked. <sighs> and apparently, uh, 250 anonymous callers called him. That's a lot it? of FSU fans. That's very little. Yeah, that seems pretty light. But he, the, he answered some of them. He did? Yeah. Calling me every name in the book, talking about how we shouldn't be in the playoff. Can you, can you bring up his number, Jake? He's probably I don't changed have it. it by now. John Rich wrote a blog on it. That's kind of awesome, though. Okay. Yeah. So he's like, he's open to the haters. Yeah. Uh, my cool throne is Tua. Tua mm. played the guitar on the Manning cast on Monday night. Yep. And I think he's going to collab with Darius Rucker. Ooh. Oh, that, we love Darius Rucker NFL collabs. That one clip of yeah. Tua dodging the rush is so awesome. We just like, shook his shoulder. Yeah. yeah that was pretty Darius sick. Rucker said, I'm in. For a Tua collab. There we go. Huge. Tua yeah. and Darius. Shout out to Hootie and the Blowfish. Hootie, my favorite <laughs> band. Hootie's your favorite band? Well, it's kind of an inside joke because I got exposed for not knowing them. Oh, yeah, that's Two right. Two years ago. That's three right. Three years ago. That's right. Who is your favorite band, Jake? Uh, Pop Punk. Brought to you by Come Barstool on. Sports. Okay, so you oh, don't God. listen. You don't, <laughs> Jake doesn't, Jake's one of those weirdos who doesn't listen to music. Correct. Do you, do you I like, mean, I listen to music, but I'm not going like, to go out of my way to like, pick a certain Well, no, that means you artist. don't listen to music. Like, did you have, even have a Spotify wrapped? Yeah, it was like part of my take. No, but you you have Taylor music Swift. too. So do you like in your if you're in a car, you're not like turning on the music? radio. Jesus, what about on like, like a today's plane? hits on a plane? Today's hits. A yeah. plane, you won't listen to music. <laughs> uh, or like watch something. What about when you're when Mr. Positions is in action? Yeah, you listen. <laughs> put a little R. Kelly on. He, he listens to like uh, uh, what's that? Carton. I don't Boomer know what you're about. Oh, Boomer. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why are these lights flashing? Yeah. Jake, also, hello from YouTube from our new camera angle. We got memes in the mix now. Oh, memes hello. is on camera. Everybody's memes. been wanting Everyone to look at memes. memes. Yeah. Memes is a beautiful boy. <laughs> look at him. He's so beautiful. Memes not a people person. Just so everyone knows, he doesn't bite, but he kind of does. <laughs> memes, memes was born out of the internet. I feel like th this is the first time people are seeing memes for some people. Yeah, yeah. memes is is. No, he's been in videos. Loki, one of the best athletes here at this company. Yeah, you would never know it by the way he walks. Memes, I have a new best friend for you too. Oh, uh, Liam, the no context college football yeah. guy we just hired. Yeah, he yeah, is literally gonna... born from the internet, just like you, and he has the same mannerisms. Where it's like, if you talk to him, he's like, "I don't really want to do this." You guys are gonna. I just want to meme so well. Yeah, he wears uh, sandals inside. Too. Yeah, you yeah. you guys like we just hired another memes. You guys should like, become oh, best shit. friends. I don't think memes likes him. Oh no! <laughs> no no no! I like him. I like him. This place isn't big enough for two of us. <laughs> he does great yeah, work. that's what I, that's yeah. what my vibe off of what memes is doing. Uh, like, this is this is my turf. Yeah, I'm the guy who's who's ornery and tough to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, what the fuck? We already got one of these. I, I take screenshots. Yeah. I, I post pictures of you looking as fat as possible. Oh, that's not me. No, that's you. That's totally that's memes. Me. Yeah, that's you. Uh, all right, let's get to our interview. We got a great interview. We got uh, Mo and Franz Wagner from The Magic. Great, great interview with both these guys in studio. And it's brought to you by our friends at Body Armor. Shout out to Body Armor. Body Armor helps us stay hydrated throughout our interviews with the biggest guests in the world. Packed with electrolytes and no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes, Body Armor hydrates the best athletes in the world, and more importantly, us during interviews. Buy Body Armor today. Visit the Body Armor Amazon store or retailers nationwide. Available in stores nationwide, head on over to Body Armor store on Amazon and get yours today. Okay, here they are, Mo and Franz Wagner. Okay, we now welcome on two very special guests. They're brothers. I think this is the first time we've had brothers on at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had the Cuomo's on. The Cuomo's that yeah. went sideways real fast. We ha we have the Wagner brothers, Mo and Franz from the Orlando Magic in studio. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, first question: Did I say your last name correctly? Is uh, it a V? Should I do the V? No, if you say it American like that, you said it right. Okay, but did yeah. I sound like a poser? Where people are like, he clearly, he's American. He just tried to go the Wagner. No, that's that's the right way to say yeah, it. Okay, right. all right, good, good. I appreciate that. Yes, yes. So uh, <laughs> thank you guys for coming in. We're very excited to have you on the show. Um, we want to talk about your whole career. First, let's let's jump into this season. You guys are playing good ball. The Magic, I feel like the Magic got a little, you know, people are talking about the Magic, Paolo, you guys. Um, how's it? Is it weird to play together in the NBA? Because it's pretty crazy to have two brothers on the same team. 
Yeah, it's super special, obviously. It's uh, super unique. Um, we got super lucky. I got drafted to the Magic Mode, signed there the, the same year. So um, we're definitely enjoying it. Um, and it took a little bit of an adjustment period, I would say, at, at first. What, what was the adjustment period? Yeah, what it, was the adjustment it's, period? It's just, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of emotion that, that, that comes with it. We're <laughs> both very emotional. Um, so when stuff doesn't go maybe our way on the court, there's a lot more um you know stuff that comes up from the past and stuff like that when you get mad at each other so yeah oh like um, like in practice you're like yeah like stuff like that i remember when we were five and you were trying to do this exactly exactly. (laughs) a lot of that stuff come comes up sometimes but um i mean obviously it's it's super cool for both of us for the whole family so we're making the most out of it yeah who's the more emotional of the two of you Oh, that's tough. I would say Mo. Who's the messy bitch? Mo? Mo, you're, I you're mean, the emotional one? Um I'm I'm more like external emotionally, I would say. Uh, I let it all out. Uh and Franz is a little more low key. But if you know him really well, uh you know when he has his phases as well. And I've sure. obviously known him his entire life, so um I can say that he's very emotional as well. Yeah, so yeah. so being on the same team, um, is it like what's the locker room dynamic where everyone's like, these guys are brothers? Has anyone ever like jokingly tried to talk shit to one of you about the other, like being like this guy, yeah, like Mo's game sucks. He's like, dude, that's my brother. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I think we find a pretty good balance to like, obviously embrace the brother thing, but also at the same time we different individuals and not everything I do, Franz has to do in the other way around. So there's a certain boundary and with teammates as well. And we kind of embrace that, that difference in relationship. And uh, we also don't want to like kind of, I don't know, side with each other, you know, where our teammates feel weird about it. And I think we, um, we've, we've gotten in a very good organic habit in the locker room to just kind of respect each other as teammates and not only as brothers. Yeah. Has there been a moment where you have to make a decision like, wait, this would be a good opportunity for me to agree with everybody else that's not my brother just to show them like, hey, I'm on your side. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I, I think that's not that big a thing. I think if I if Mo says something that I don't agree with, um, I'll be totally honest and tell him that. And uh, yeah, sure will. Yeah, I exactly. love the I love the like healthy sibling rivalry between you two. Can we? Can you guys compliment each other? Can you? Can each brother say something to the other one of maybe one thing that they do well that you, you wish you could do better? You want us to do that live? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can start. I think Franz. Um, Franz has the ability to like. He has a very. Uh, a healthy curiosity about everything so he go- comes in a room and observes everything and kind of takes what he wants what he needs for his life and uh makes sense out of that i think it's pretty unique for his age i f- sometimes forget that he's 22 22 right 22, 22 yeah. years old uh he's very mature for his age so um that's something I wish I had a little more where I could just observe and just take everything, uh, what I want and what I don't want. And, uh, it's very reflective on that end. Yeah. Ooh, that nice. was good. That was a good answer. A good one. That I, had that, good I had that, I had that, uh, <laughs> I had that ready. Yeah. I prepared for the yeah, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So Franz, I, I would say what I like about how Mo just comes into a room is, you know, Mo is Mo. He, he won't change for anybody else. He, uh, He's uh he's gonna be straight up with you, and uh, I wish I had that sometimes a little bit more. I think sometimes I'm a little bit more, um, I don't know, on the more conservative side. Don't want to uh, take sides right away or uh, say my opinion right away out loud if I don't know somebody in the room yet. Um, and Mo Mo's just being himself all the time. I mm-hmm. think that's some that I can still do a little bit more. So it's interesting you brought that up because I had a question about this. Um, Last year, Killian Hayes. I knew this was going to get out. <laughs> threw a punch, uh, sucker, sucker punch, through the uh, sucker punch at the back of Mo's head. Damn. Notice that you weren't anywhere in the clip. <laughs> I know there's Very a rule fair. that you can't yeah. leave the bench. Were you on the bench at the time? I was at, I was on the bench. All right, so you can maybe. I did leave the out. bench. You did. You did leave. The I bench? was the last one to leave the bench. Okay, but like what? <laughs> like I, I saw that clip. I remember when it happened. I was like, where the fuck is Franz? That's a very good point. I, I felt bad. For two, for two, uh, for two different reasons. <laughs> One, it was my brother, and uh, you know I didn't stick up with, stick up for him in the moment. And two, I got fined because I still left the bench. Oh, so, no. so it was the worst, the worst of both worlds. Double whammy. Yeah. When you watch the clip back, w- did you notice that? I mean, I'll be honest with you. I had a lot going on. I didn't really uh, care about what Franz did in that moment. Uh, I honestly just tried to get out of that hole. Yeah, you were in the yeah. middle of it. That was a rough week. Yeah. I think even if he had gotten up, he would not have been able to get in there. Yeah. Exactly. There was a lot going on, so my least worry was what Franz is doing right now. I just try to get out of that. If that doesn't happen in front of their bench either, I don't think any of this is happening anyway. Right. So um, you don't want to like be on YouTube and social media because of stuff like that. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. That's kind of where my head was at. So um, 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would have been nice to see Franz in there. Uh, yeah. Just saying it. Yeah. The uh, Morris twin. Probably right. Yeah. 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 The Morris bro- the Morris I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. If Fran- scores I'll tell you what. I'll make up for it if Franz ever gets hit in the back My of the head. I'll, I'll, like be, I'll be right yeah. there. You guys are brothers. <laughs> All right. So I want to talk about the, like your path to the NBA because obviously Germany, like there's there's Dirk and, and there's players from Germany, but it's not like, you know, a ton of players in the NBA in Germany. What was it like playing basketball in Germany when you were kids? Like, it's not the main sport. What what was that like? like was it hard to find leagues? Was it hard to find, like, an outlet for uh, playing basketball as a kid? Well, um, I think it's not it's not difficult to find an outlet. The, 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 the main difference is that basketball is super popular here, and part of the reason is because everybody plays it in school. Right. So that's like that. that that's the first the accessibility is the easiest part. You just go on a basketball team in high school, and then when you play there, you're the man, and you're supposed to go to college, and all of a sudden the NBA is right there. You can watch it every night on national television. For us, it's kind of like a you, such – You such, made that sound way too easy. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, obviously – All we got to do is just be like the man in high school, then college, <laughs> then the NBA. Everyone does it. Yeah. No. <laughs> obviously, it's not easy at all. I didn't mean to sound like that, but like it's just like a very – accessible world for right. us it's more you know you got to get up at 3 a.m in the morning if you want to watch these games you really gotta um have that thought that you're gonna make that happen for yourself uh and come up with that on your own and i think that's the biggest challenge because that's not necessarily a german mentality either to kind of say yeah fuck it i'll do it right um and i think that's the biggest challenge uh you go to a club you have to kind of be able to coordinate school with club um, and that's time, not very time efficient. You got to be very, you got to be grown up very early and it's a different style of basketball too, that you learn to play. So, um, those are challenges that make it a lot harder or seem a lot harder at first. But, uh, once you get to college, there's a lot good from take to take from that as well. I, I do think we take it for granted that like those, you know, baseball, football, basketball, even hockey, like you know th- there's a outlet right when you're a little 100%. kid like yeah. kids are you know my kids in t-ball my kids already playing basketball it's like offered everywhere 100%. what so you said style what's the main difference in like learning european basketball that when you came over to america you're like oh this is different and maybe something that helped you more than you realized we can have a whole podcast yeah. about that we can talk about th- franz and i talk about this all the time because i think I mean, the the biggest thing is uh, you you learn to play without the ball. I think it's not about it's not about you when you learn to play in Europe. Um, so I don't think I've I don't think I scored more than twenty five points before I got to college. Uh, you never it's never about the individual. It's always you learn how to play very organized at a very young age, and you see that in the NBA too. Um, that European players like just know how to play with each other. Um, and then in college, it's all of a sudden you get there and it's like, okay, it's like this raw, raw mentality. I have to kill you to get the spot mm-hmm. and I have to start and all these things that were very new for us, but which we needed to in order to get to the NBA because it's America. You right. Know, it's yeah. You have to get right. minutes at some yeah. point. You yeah. have to show what you can do if you yeah. want to get to the NBA. <laughs> exactly. yeah, you right. have to, you have to like adjust to that mentality and take it, take it on on your own. Cause if you don't like, they'll test you in that first practice. If if you can't take on that mentality, that's, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. So it's, America has made you more selfish. I like that. It's good. <laughs> that's a great way to summarize yeah. it. Honestly, yeah. I was like, one I'm of our old. greatest exports. Yeah, <laughs> it is. yeah. More competitive. Let's yeah, say. more competitive. That's, that's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. 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 So wait, why, when you were growing up, was was Dirk everything? Is he just a basketball god over in Germany? Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, basketball god for sure. But at the same time, like. I wanted to say this earlier, like we don't grow up in Europe with the pressure of needing to make, make to make the NBA. You know, kids here, they grow up all want to make the NFL, the NBA. Like that's all they care about when they play the sport. Like we grow up, we want to play for our team in Berlin. Like that's that's what we dream of when we uh, when we grow up. And then as we get older, maybe you're a prospect. Not, now you start thinking about that, but it's never NBA or bust. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, I think with Dirk, it's, he's a definitely a, a huge figure a huge athlete in, in germany but because basketball is just not at that popularity standpoint it's not like uh a star would be here or sports in general honestly aren't yeah. as much a part of society uh back home so it yeah. is so when when did you guys realize like oh we have goals that are bigger than you know just playing for our team in berlin like we're gonna be in the nba what was that moment and, and was it someone who pushed you there or a scout who was like, yo, you guys are really, really good. I will say that. I mean, I think that's, I don't know how Franz feels about that, but that took me the most energy to come up with that mentality of F everything. I'm going to do this and I'm going to believe in it. 
even though nobody here else talks about it, you know, and that's kind of, that took me a lot of energy. Um, there was a click moment when I was like 15 years old. I really wanted to go to college um, because our parents went to school, uh, went to a university, and we wanted to kind of connect basketball and uh, the school aspect of it. And then through that, I realized, okay, there's more that we can do. And then at some point, I wanted to go to college because I want to go to the NBA. So um, at, at a certain point, I just said, fuck fuck this i want to go to the league right and i'm going to do that and i'm going to figure it out there wasn't really a plan b i was too too crazy to have a plan b but i was also not arrogant enough to say uh, i'm going to make the league you kind of have that for yourself and that takes a lot of energy and a lot of belief um and i'm i'm lucky it worked out yeah could have gone any other way too yeah 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 So, so why michigan what made you decide that Michigan was the right place for you to go from Germany? Because if I if I grew up in Europe and I was thinking <laughs> about the United States, I would probably think Los Angeles, yeah. Miami, Arizona, Arizona, somewhere nice, maybe Hawaii, go play out there. Why Michigan? Well, next time, tell them to offer me. You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> which that's not how it works. I, I love want, when you said that. You sounded like a diehard villain. <laughs> <laughs> I had a one. I had one offer, and yeah. uh, Coach Beeline kind of. Yeah, d- believed in me. He said, "Here, we want you to come to Michigan. It's cold, but <laughs> it's, it's a good school. They play very European. Obviously, Big Ten, super, super slow basketball. Relatively, um, they played five out, which was good for me. Um, there's a lot of it's very skill oriented. So I feel like that that was a fit. And then I was either going to Michigan or stay at home. And uh, I kind of, I kind of just I took the risk." And Franz, did you was it Michigan or nothing else for you, or did you get offered other places? I got offered really like I just I didn't decide that I was actually going to Michigan until it was like I want to say May or June or something like that. So really late um, that summer. Um, so I got some offers really late because some of the guys left for the NBA at other schools. Um, but it was more for me. It was more between choosing Michigan or staying at home and signing a contract there. And I was kind of waiting because Beeline had just left. Um, to go to the NBA, and I was kind of waiting who, who was going to be your next coach. Yeah. And once Juwan got the job, I, I really connected with him. I felt really comfortable. And I knew the school, um, just the experience-wise, obviously I knew that from Mo that that was going to be fun. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I waited on that. So you brought up Juwan. I didn't, but since you did bring up Juwan, um, I went to Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where's this headed, I wonder? <laughs> what, 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 I mean, you're, what's your coach doing? He's smushing people's faces? Like that, you had to say, like, this is ridiculous. This is not mi- You guys call yourself Michigan men, and you smush people in the face? I mean, he, he's sticking up for his team. Yeah, I was gonna for a handshake? He's getting upset about a handshake? So, some, something had to happen, I'm sure. Um, I'm not saying I'm condoning uh, any violence. I think, like we removed, that, I think we removed enough to say that that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, right, I think, I, it was great for the sport. I said right in the minute, like, I love rivalries. I love those moments. I, I think it's we're a, not getting in trouble if we say that. Like, yeah. yeah. Obviously, that was crazy, but at the same time, I was like, yeah, that's my Did he, God. That was Did a good he, Michigan yeah. man answer that yeah. you just gave. Yeah. Like, you hate to see violence. Close the ranks, Connor beautiful. Stallion. No, we can just say yeah. like that kicked ass. That was yeah. Cool. <laughs> Did he <laughs> practice that? Did he practice? He's like, listen, guys, if if we lose by like thirty, I'll smush someone's face like that, and here's how. No, I don't know if he practiced it, but that's <laughs> you know that's the type of coach you want to play for. That that stands up for your team and. um you know, really is part of the group. I think um, Juwan did that while I was there, and he's still doing that. Um, like I said, I'm not condoning any violence, but... Um, <laughs> but it was funny, yeah. We definitely won that fight, too. No. Yeah. <laughs> you guys lost by 20, and you got upset about a timeout. It was crazy. So, all right, so other question about Michigan. Not a great uh, thing for you, Mo. That Villanova game. Yeah. We were there. In the, that up. We were there in the building. I want to say this the nicest way possible because obviously you guys had an incredible run. That entire run was insane uh, to the finals. Yeah. But at what point in that game were you like, oh, we're fucked? Because we felt it like maybe five minutes in. <laughs> we were like, oh, no. Villanova is this good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you look at that roster. It's, it's crazy. Just, it's ridiculous. I mean, they have five NBA players, six NBA players. They started at all NBA five. Like, in college, that's so unique. Um, the fact that we're – even in the game within the first 10 minutes uh, is, is pretty special. I mean, we had a pretty good team, too. Um, I have a hard time letting go of things in general, but that sometimes still haunts me, uh, obviously, because you don't get that close right. ever. Well, it shouldn't haunt you. you. 
you could play that game a hundred times, you'd have lost a hundred times. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. Thank you. You're you're probably right. It's bad timing, but like it, it's not about that. You just like you just like think, okay, what would have happened if you won that thing? Yeah, you know what I mean, but um, it was an incredible run. It was you guys incredible. Did it in the Big Ten championship game was that the year the the plane crash year? No, that was the year before. Okay, uh, which we won the Big Ten championship as well. Right. Thanks for bringing that up. That was good. Uh, no, yeah, that was awesome. A, I mean, I had an incredible couple of years at Michigan. Uh, I'm super grateful for that time. Obviously, it's it's it, it, it's kind of weird like feeling after a game like that because you kind of relieved at the same time. Like I remember, like it was such a crazy couple of weeks that you just you're just happy it's over with almost, and then you just got crushed by twenty. Yeah, yeah. You're so pissed you going on campus, and it's 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 so nasty. Yeah, you know? we yeah. bet Villanova in that game. We had that, a lot of that was a good bet. Easiest, yeah. easiest win of all time. <laughs> we were, uh, we when were, Dante Divincenzo scores, yeah. like that many points against you, it's like okay, they're rough. What did you bet on the Florida Wisconsin game when Chioza hit that three? What question. do you care about that? <laughs> that's a, I think that's a valid question. What do you care about that? No, who did you bet yeah, on that? That game valid. has nothing to that do with you. That was a Madison Square Garden too. We actually, yeah, we were there. We were there. We there for it. Yeah, okay. I see it. That's fine. <laughs> uh, what do we think about Harbaugh? Love it. Yeah, That's we our love coach Harbaugh. Right there. We so, so I, we love Harbaugh. If you're if you're against, I understand being against what Michigan's being accused of, and if you're a rival school, you probably hate Michigan's guts right now. Um, but it's such a funny scandal. It's so funny. Yeah. That Can I ask you this question? Yeah. So you guys are Americans. We aren't. Um, Fact. What do you think about that? like in in our business in our sport? That's called scouting. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, what do you think about the whole thing? So, the uh, the reason why you can't do it in college football is because not every school has the same athletics budget, right? So, it wouldn't be fair if some teams could afford to send five scouts to every away game when they weren't playing. Okay. Um, whereas some smaller schools would not have the resources to be able to send people out to do that. So, that's why the rule's in place. Um, but it seems like Connor Stallions didn't expense any of his trips. And he might have just oh, done it man. out of the good of his own heart to, right. to go on these trips. It's a big which, heart. Which is, uh, I guess, abiding by the spirit of the rule, if not the letter of the law. But you're right. It, it is scouting. It's just trying to make it so. And, well, every other team is going to say that they don't do that. Right. And right. I'm sure that's, some teams do, but they're saying Michigan's the only team that's doing it. That's unfair. Here, Here's the part. So I, I think it's cheating in the fact that, yes, by the letter of the law, it's cheating. But the part that bothers me is – all the Big Ten teams complaining about it because that's like it, that's such an excuse. You, you're getting your your teeth kicked in by them every you know for the yeah. last two years. Find a way to beat them. Like right. I, I hate the excuse thing. That's the part that bothers me. Yeah, yeah. Go find a way to beat them. We're gonna get back to Mo and Franz in a second. They're brought to you by Pepperoni. Blake absolutely loves Pepperoni. It's his first football season. He's a terrible gambler, but he loves watching football with his dad. We always chow down on Pepperoni. I fed him probably seven or eight pieces of pepperoni during the second half of the game last night alone he loves this stuff pepperoni treats are blake's favorite snack on game days pepperoni treats are delicious for dogs he'll do anything for pepperoni he'll sit he'll stay he'll lay down he'll wave he loves his tricks and when i have a pepperoni in my hand even when he just thinks i have a pepperoni in my hand he'll do whatever i want go to his crate bark on command he does it all blake's the best and he loves pepperoni. He's my BFF, and you can celebrate your favorite sports team with your BFF, your pup. Be your best friend's best friend with pepperoni treats. Go to pepperoni.com. Find a, ba a bag near you. That's P-U-P-P-E-R-O-N-I.com. Pepperoni.com. Find a bag near you. The interview is also brought to you by Blue Chew. You can have better sex with Blue Chew. Blue Chew is currently the only place to go for chewable versions of sildenafil and Tadalafil, these ingredients help men achieve stronger, harder, and longer-lasting erections for sexual activity. It helps combat all forms of ED, which also includes performance anxiety, and also maintaining an erection long enough for sex. The chewable tablets have the same active ingredients that you find in Viagra and Cialis, but they're in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew is all about having confidence when it comes time to perform and having healthy and happy relationships. A Blue Chew subscription includes a free online consultation, 24-7 medical support, a prescription if approved, and discreet delivery straight to your door every month. Chew it and do it. Use code PMT for your first month free. We should get some, some Blue Chew delivered here to the office. I want all the boys on a healthy regimen of Blue Chew. Use code PMT. Get your first month for free. And now, here's more of the Wagners. Yeah. Do, you guys, do you guys do that? Do you have a magic scout? 
doing i i don't even think you could i mean we have like 20 scouts in the building they yeah. do this for a living like yeah, that's why yeah. i'm like so confused about it like we can call our plays and the opposite team knows exactly what we're running you still got to stop it i've never played football so i don't know how it works and we've had this conversation a lot on the dinner table or on the lunch table lately within the team but like i guess it's different in football uh when you really know a route or a play it's easier to stop it yes, but yeah. um i guess you i i I think it's ridiculous, yeah. to be honest with you. And the funny thing is we, we got the signs now, so you can take the three-game suspension, but we'll still know what yeah. you're running. Yeah. Right? Well, he true. gets to coach during the week, Yeah, but he has to, he has to just sit out on, on Saturdays. Saturdays. Yeah. Well, so speaking of scouting, when was the first time someone came and scouted you guys in Germany? Did you uh, notice right away? You're like, oh, there's that fat American sitting in a Tommy <laughs> Bahama shirt. I, I think I think you don't really notice as a player. Uh, I know for sure that at the FIBA tournaments, like when you play for your national team, when you're like under 16, under 18, that type of stuff, there's a lot of NBA scouts there. I know that now, but I wasn't really yeah uh, aware at that point. That's probably say. better because I would definitely be like, there's a scout and then just have a terrible game. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I had no clue. Line. I was way too – no, I was no, I had no clue. What would you guys – you guys won not uh, – Olympics. What what did you guys win? You the won World the World Cup. The World Cup. World Cup. FIBA World Cup. FIBA World Cup. Who did you guys beat in the final? Was it the U.S.? Ser- Serbia. Oh, okay. The U.S. We beat in the semifinal. Yeah. Who was on the U.S. team? Let's go through the team. Um, <laughs> a bunch of Villanova guys actually. Pa- Paolo Bancaro was on the team. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Is he good? He, he's solid. I think. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Tyrese but, Halliburton, Anthony Edwards. All right, so we didn't send our best, no, best not players. our best and brightest. Yeah. Do we really want to get into really good <laughs> players? If, if we sent, if we sent our uh, our like first team, how much do we beat you guys by? We we shall see in the Olympics. Yeah, we shall see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Think- like you've, I've heard, I've heard you talk about having to guard Kevin Durant and like maybe kind of your welcome to the NBA moment. You, oh, you heard that? Yeah, I, I I listened to it. I did some scouting. Some yeah, I did, I did some dumb shit. I will be honest with you. In my in my first couple of years, I I I mean, I talk a lot, obviously, and I've I've kind of put that back a little bit um but uh, one, one of the first times i matched up against kevin durant and obviously dude i'm a huge nba fan right like i i know all these guys from youtube i know all i watch all these games at night franz and i would get up at night and watch these players so all of a sudden i'm on the court with them and obviously my first year i'm a little starstruck and uh kevin durant guards me and i think he's not taking me serious at all he doesn't even know who i was and i'm like on a pick and pop three and he fouls me and I didn't realize it was him and, like, turned around and said, yeah, you can't guard me. <laughs> <laughs> and, That's like, crazy. I have n- no credibility whatsoever uh, <laughs> at this point. Um, and it's Kevin Durant I just talked smack to. Yeah. And at that point, it was the Warriors. He was on the Warriors. And it was him, Draymond Green, and DeMarcus Cousins um, that were on the free throw line box out talking shit to me why i was shooting three free throws oh my uh-huh. god and i'm telling you i was so shook <laughs> did you make him i made one out of three yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think there's like a replay you can see quinn cook on the sideline like laughing his ass off because yeah. those three guys were going at yeah me. those are like three of the worst no, guys yeah, to want to just i set myself up for that though <laughs> i deserved all of that you can't guard me you can't around. guard me you can't <laughs> guard me so did you- and i turn around and i see kd and it's like what did you just say? I'm like, oh <laughs> no. Yeah. Did you have any of those moments, Franz, where you're like, oh, this is different? They're like the NBA is is maybe not like Boogie Cousins yelling at you on the free throw line, but some moment where you're like, okay, this I got to focus a little more because this is definitely harder than it was in college. I mean, I remember my first. I think it was our first preseason game. We we're playing the Celtics, and I was guarding uh, Jason Tatum in the post, and he like did this quick spin move and. I was still standing there as he was dunking the ball. Like, I didn't even notice that he like had left. Um, that was like the one moment where I was like, "Yo, this is so much faster, so much quicker." <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Kevin Durant, I I tried to guard him as best as I could in in an actual game. Then and I think it went eleven for twelve oh, for thirty no. points. And it's just like you try all you can, but it just he's just like like it's a workout just on hard himself. shots too it's yeah. not like layups it's like insane shots yeah yeah you're His playing what is. you think is like the best defense that oh, you yeah. can against him and then there's nothing you can do about it and just on that like he's just working out by himself then like that's how it feels yeah, yeah. do you yeah. guys do you guys live together yeah what's we, that like it's fun it's fun oh. we uh we live in a house that's probably a little too big for both of us but um <laughs> it's awesome we both have our you know private space most upstairs i'm downstairs um and yeah we're kind of catching up on on some time that we 
kind of lost when Mo went to Michigan and later on in the NBA. Do you guys have moments where you are like hanging out in the NBA and you're like, remember when we used to wake up at like three in the morning and watch YouTube videos together, like as you know, teenagers? Because that's got to be kind of a, a whole. Like, Dude, mind I think fuck. this. I think this all all the time. Like even when we pull up to the United Center yesterday, I'm like, this is so crazy. This is a big ass arena. People actually pay to watch us play. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I mean, we talk about this all the time, and I've I've been in the league for four years without him. Obviously, living by myself, and it gets lonely real quick. You know, you only get to play basketball so much a day, and then you have all the rest of the day in some city that you've never lived in, um, kind of sp- to spend by yourself. And having a roommate or kind of having that camaraderie is 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 just really cool. You yeah. can share it, and obviously saying it out loud too that this is kind of cool what we are doing has so much value and reminds you of how grateful you should be to do this job. Yeah, yeah. Who's the hardest guy to guard and not name Kevin Durant? For both of you, I mean, there's players like you can't really guard, like Joel Embiid, for example, is like one of those guys where you just like you have to have it, make it difficult for him. Uh, Jokic, you kind of it's like before the game you like decide what you want to take away or what you want to challenge him in, and the rest you just kind of live with, uh, without like admitting weakness here but it's just like the the, the skill set and like it's just so incredible right in this league that um it's kind of like just make it di- as difficult as you can for him and then live with the result yeah because i i remember i think jj reddick said it on his podcast that like the misconception that guys in the nba don't play defense right. is so off oh, it's, it's the that the ever. guys in the nba are so good at offense that it's there are certain people that you you can't do anything you can try your best but you can't Right. I mean, we're trying our best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying. Sure. Who's yeah. the toughest guy to play against? Like, who's this? Who's the most tenacious defender that you've had to go up against? Oh, man. He gets like twenty-eight shots a game. So I'm like, <laughs> on that. Hey, um, you fill it up. <laughs> what are you averaging this year? I don't know. I'm I'm, let's up. stay away from the average. Oh, why not? You, you guys. Look, don't, he's looking. Wait, you up. guys. You don't read like your box scores. You don't nah, keep track your stats. We don't. I I don't look at numbers. I don't. Ron's averaging. Uh, why? Why wouldn't you know how much you're averaging a game? You're I, I think. I think it's bad to like. Eighteen point three points. Try, points try, try to play a game and uh, try to hit eighteen point three points again. You know what I mean? Well, it'd be I tough to hit eighteen point three, but yeah. Eighteen. Forget <laughs> what I'm saying. Eighteen five and three. That's pretty damn good. So yeah. So who's the guy who, when you have to match up against him, you're like, this is going to be a long, not a long night, but it's going to be harder than usual. I would say, I would say PJ Tucker because he's really physical. Yeah. Um, Kawhi Leonard. We just played the Clippers. Um, His arms are so mm-hmm. long, and he's so strong. Like people don't realize it. Like, really can't move him. Like, yeah. There's, there's no point in even trying. Hey, do you guys think that zone defense is kind of coward defense? It is, right? <laughs> you probably I mean, play it in in Europe I, a lot, right? As a, as an offense, it means that they can't. That they're having a problem stopping you with a five on five team. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that's, I think that's they're almost assessment. admitting it. Yeah. 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 Do you like saying at the end of the day, though, like if you win with a zone offense, you won. So right. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if it win with a zone defense, you won too. Yeah. yeah. The incentive is to score more points. That's true. So if you can't figure out a zone, that always makes you look more foolish than the zone defense. Yeah. Right. Do you like playing zone defense? Like, like being on defense yeah. in the zone? Yeah. Um, I would, I, I, I would, I would just get like, uh, like I would, I would be standing there and just be like, Oh wait, where am I supposed to stand? Yeah. That, that's, <laughs> that is actually a thing. Like we spend 99% of our time in practice playing man defense. So then when we're in the game, sometimes we throw a zone out there just to throw it off the other team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're definitely not as used to playing zone defense as we are in man. So right. there's, it's just a, it's just way different. It's not that it's more chill or you have to move less or anything like that you have to actually like communicate a lot more because you know you, you're not doing it as much you, feeling it's not space, a habit yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah have you guys ever been in the zone in the zone like in the zone shooting wise has yeah. there been a, di- a game what game do you remember um, it C- could you feel different when you were in the zone you're like this is just no matter what i throw up there it's going in yeah, yeah. That's got to run. It's an amazing feeling. I, yeah. I would imagine it's the best feeling in the world. I had it sure. one time in college, and ever since then it's been uh, – How many did you score? I scored 22 points and a half. Which is Purdue. a lot in college, yeah. Oh, and it felt so good. Yeah. It w- Like, it's just like 
you go into halftime, it's like, what just happened? It's so much fun. That's yeah. awesome. What about you, Franz? I would say my, my first real good game in the NBA. Um, I wouldn't say I was in the zone the whole game, but I had a stretch in the fourth. Um, yeah, where it just it's just that perfect mix of, like, relaxation, focus. Like, you're just in that in that perfect mind spot. And, uh, yeah, like you said, everything you're throwing up there is, feels like it's going in. I would yeah. be in the zone once. It would be so good. I would time. just hope that the game would never end. Right. Like, yeah. let's keep playing. Something yeah. something good. I would also try to recreate everything I did that day, like the next time yeah, I played. Yeah, yeah. Re- yeah. Do the same, like, breakfast, lunch, <laughs> same routine. Everything. Don't change a single thing. Wear the same underwear. So Patrick <laughs> Mahomes does, you know? Yeah. yeah. He wears the same underwear. Do you un- wash the underwear after the game? He or? says he doesn't. He's that's a, nasty. Yeah. yeah that's, he says, how many games are they a year? 17, 18, 18 17 now, yeah, 17 games. So, you know, and watching playoffs, for 17 yeah. games. Yeah. You guys have a NFL a team you root for? Have we what? You have an NFL team you root for? We, we root for the Finns. The yeah. Finns up. Oh, okay. Jacob, yeah. Jacob, there we go. Yeah. Goals, what so. What about, when? were you guys kids when they started putting NFL games in Germany? Yes. Did you go? Um, Is it weird? Tell us oh, from you your mean- perspective. No, oh, not on TV, but like the actual. Okay, games no, I playing. never went to an actual game okay. in Germany. I never, but um, I, I think like a couple years ago, I don't know exactly how long, but they would like put out the, the Sunday games, which is like prime time. Back yeah. Home, right. So they would show two of those, at home, and that was that's like a that's like a memory of mine, like doing my homework, watching the game with my dad. Um, and there's actually a really big following. I mean, that's why they have games there now. It's the best sport in the world. Yeah. 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 Did you ever pretty, think about cool. playing American football? No, you'd be tight ends. <laughs> you'd be great tight ends. No, Sweet. I went one block. And yeah, be one shattered. quarter. Yeah. That's <laughs> it. Did you guys play soccer growing up? Yeah. Yeah. So, because I was gonna say, like, there probably was a moment where, like, all the soccer players, like, you're gonna really waste your time with this basketball <laughs> thing, <laughs> and now you can laugh at them and be like, that wasn't a waste. <laughs> Look at us. Yeah. I mean, I played. I played at the same time for two years. I always say that I would be a really good soccer player. My brother doesn't really believe me, but um, <laughs> too tall. Uh, I had a lot. I had a great time playing soccer. It was it was really cool. Well, yeah. Germany's got a history of very tall soccer players that yeah, were pretty not good. This tall. Not Six that tall. Six eleven on a soccer pitch. It's in, in, it's, it's very yeah. tall. You know, and these guys are so fast. Yeah, like, yeah, no if, like the defenders, most of the times are the tallest ones, right? Right. Like they're going up against like Messi and all these guys. Like you know these guys are stop. so fast. You know, yeah. the thing I can no stop shot. Leroy Sané and like one on one. Kim Olajuwon was a, he was a goalkeeper for the Nigerian national team. Was yeah. he? Yeah. Really? But it's it's it seems weird because I know he, he's so far from the ground, so you just shoot low on him. Yeah, and it goes in. But yeah, he was a really good, good soccer player for a while. Who who's what team do you guys root for in soccer? Bayern. I'm a big no. Veta Veta Bremen fan. I don't know if that says anything. Is it's, that first league? It's the first league. Bundesliga. Uh, it's a Bundesliga exactly. It's a team in the north. Um, you guys suck. It sounds like you suck. The way you're saying healthy it, healthy midfield. Suck. Healthy, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> healthy sounds midfield. like you suck. Like huh? the Bears in the NFL. Oh well, no, we're, we're, we're not healthy midfield. We're we're the worst. We're always the worst. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, that's fair. That's a fair shot. Yeah. You know, that, I like it. I like those. Uh, what's the one thing that people fans get wrong about the NBA? Like they don't understand it. Like the one thing, whether it be how tough the grind is or like I was saying about how everyone's good at offense and that's not means that you're not trying on defense. What's the thing that like you could correct if you know, you hear fan criticism, you're like, that's not exactly how it works. I have one thing that comes to mind, right, right? Don't DM me about your bets. Oh, okay. I do not yeah, that's a fair. Shit. I don't give uh, a All right, fuck. I got to delete okay. a couple uh, DMs real quick. <laughs> But no, what if you had a parlay and you just need to get one more fucking rebound? Yeah. Yeah, that's – I mean, I understand that, but that's uh-huh. your fault for betting. I mean, uh, I really don't give a rat's ass about your bet. That's so a fair people, response. Uh, yeah. That's the one thing that I'm not here for your bets. Okay. Um, I actually it's like It's getting out of hand. It's like 10, 15 people at a time, like yeah. every game. And they going crazy, too. Yeah. <laughs> They get personal. Yeah. They oh, yeah, these guys personal. sound nuts. Yeah, the worst. So that's just you don't have anybody never, that works here that never do would that. DM a player <laughs> after a bad loss. No, it's fun though. Obviously, I'm not. I'm not against that. But just yeah. don't DM me. Yeah, um, that's fair. Well, you could also just not look at the DMs. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so maybe it's yeah, actually on you. Your DMs? Yeah, it's that's on that's you. That's a great. Yeah, what are you point. looking for in your DMs, Mo? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> depends on the city. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man. All right, so I had one last question. It's a rowback question. R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com. Use promo code TAKE. Uh, Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, rowback.com. Promo code TAKE, 20% off first purchase. Since we did talk a little Big Ten, what's the toughest place to play in the Big Ten? I will say Michigan State or Ohio State. Okay. Yeah, pretty 
they have, they have a big student section. They obviously go crazy for the Michigan game. Yeah. yeah. Um, big rivalry. It's always always a special special time. Yeah. What about you? Dark Horse Purdue. Yeah. Oh, okay. it was good. Yeah. Purdue. It's also like so dark in there. Like the fans are all like wear black. Yeah. Huh? And it's like they on top of you almost. Like the student section is on top of the bench almost. It feels weird. Um, I gave yeah. you guys an opening there to say Cole Center because of the refs always call the games differently. You know what's that funny is. about that arena? It's like a lot of like because Madison is such a cool like normal city where people like that aren't students live too. Um, they're quiet for like thirty five minutes. It, and the the student section is in the end. Like they should yeah. put it behind the bench. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And then but but they they go on a run and then all of a sudden that that place is live. It's yeah. insane. Mm -hmm. It it could be quiet for thirty five minutes and then they go on one little run and Cole Center is cool. I think it's because they they drink so much before the games they don't get in until like midway through the second quarter. Yeah, and they're it's hard to they're, cheer they're when you have a belly drunk. full of cheese curds. Yeah, <laughs> good answer though with Michigan State because I feel like Michigan State is a very hard place to play at any Super team that goes hard. in there and wins a game. It's huge. They have to be an elite basketball. Program. They've already lost a couple games this year. Oh, though, they right? did. They? they lose to who? I don't know. I'm not a big college college. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah. Look it up. I think they lost their look first game at home. It must. T they lost their first game at home. Non conference. No, there's no way they lost. That's no. Look way. it up. Look it up. Okay. Non conference. Are you talking about Tom Izzo at Michigan State? Yeah, I don't. I mean, yeah. They I lost to James Madison. Oh shit! Do we know That's anyone who went to James Madison? I I got a helmet up here. That's crazy though. That they it is. Oh yeah. How much did they lose by? Uh, it was overtime, but okay, doesn't yeah, matter. I mean, it, still, it still counts. Yeah. No, but I agree with you. Still Going to Michigan State, like it's you, tough. you were a legit threat to win the national championship if you can win a game there. Yeah. Yeah, and they they show up early for the game, like in warm ups. They talking shit to you. They know um, shit about you too. Yeah. Like, for some reason, <laughs> they do their research. What's the most personal somebody's gotten in the crowd? <laughs> oh. Uh. Actually, don't say that because then other people will say yeah, that. Yeah, true. yeah, yeah. yeah. Smart. Save off, off camera. So I'll do, yeah, I'll do. I'll pivot to a different last question. When you guys were growing <laughs> up, would you um, would you guys just beat the shit out of the neighbors? Like how how intimidating was your was your family? Like we've got the tallest, most athletic people in our city that live in the same house. Like would you play basketball against them? Right, just dunk on them all the time. We only just should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why just didn't on that. you? I mean, not very violent people. It's yeah, kind of no. soft. Very tall, like, personal but personal life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No we, fighters. We would fight. We would fight each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah me and Mo. That, but For that's sure. that's about it. Mm -hmm. Who wins? Well, I I had a I had a legit advantage being five years older, four and a half years older. So there's a physical advantage there. Mm -hmm. uh, ever since that's even, we haven't fought. Um, just because we're adults now. So when was the last time you guys wrestled? <laughs> you can't tell me there hasn't been one time when you're living in the big house, too much room. No, no, we it's don't like wrestle. tussle and wrestle. <laughs> Just wrestle. wrestle yeah. Hypothetically, if you were to wrestle, who wins right now? What? Well, my grappling is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a big UFC fan. I like UFC, so I think I have an advantage there. Yeah. Were you ner were you nervous, Mo, that Franz was going to get taller than you? No, but I will say there's. I mean. Being a big brother, I think everybody can relate to that. Um, there is a point where you're like you play him one on one your entire life, and then there's an age where at some point he like pulls out a move, and you like low key like realize okay like one more month and I cannot guard this. Move. <laughs> that's, and that's that, when I stopped playing him. Yeah, that know? had to feel awesome, Franz, when you had that move. Well, I you didn't let him know. Too. I didn't let that's him know. That's the thing. He yeah. didn't let me know, so I never got to, like, actual... But actually. you knew. Yeah. You knew. You but knew like, when he stopped playing. He was like, I don't want to play anymore. It's like, oh, no, shit. Sure. He kind of, like, actually got by me. <laughs> yeah. And you're probably like, where'd you learn that from? Because I never showed that move. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, what's this? Yeah. yeah. I'll figure something out here. That's yeah. great. All right, well, thank you guys. Awesome time having you in studio anytime you're in chicago we'd love you have have you stop by for sure you can shoot Thank on our much. 10 foot two inch rims <laughs> which are the stupidest rims yeah ever. how do you mess that up i don't uh, know that we have the tallest basketball rims in the world no one has ever made a basketball rim over 10 feet that's it's, like, it's crazy feels mm -hmm. like kind of like yeah i think we're getting pranked i think it's <laughs> it's the guy that built this office hank just being like hey no dunking yeah because yeah. we'd all be able to dunk if it was 10 feet. Oh, right, the only reason right we can't dunk. Yeah. obviously well yeah. thank you guys best of luck appreciate rest it. of the season appreciate you guys thank you okay let's do some faqs it's been a while hank you ready fire him up fire him up fire him up fire him up by the way you guys have you guys looked at the schedule this weekend it's gonna fucking rock so we got chiefs bills
We got Eagles, Cowboys. Eagles, Cowboys. Which I think, Max, you were exempt from streaming. I think New York's going to stream it with Smitty. So you're happy. We'll maybe watch the second half while we're taping the show. Yeah, we'll have clips for sure. be even better for the people at home. Yeah, I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we can watch you react as it's happening. Maybe make a PM TV. Yeah, maybe make a PM TV out of it. Um, Yeah, we have that. Chiefs, Bills. Cowboys, Eagles. We have Rams, Ravens, which is going to be a great game. Mm -hmm. uh, Seahawks, game. Niners, right? Double Monday night. Yeah. Colts, Bengals, low key. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Double Monday night game. Don't be caught off guard. There are two Monday night games this week. For what reason? I don't know. But they're going to kick off at the exact same time. It's actually a good strategy because they're both games that like aren't great. They're bad games. Yeah. I think the Dolphins play in one of them. But still, you can just flip to the one that has a better game or have two TVs. All right, Hank. FAQs. Whenever y'all decide to hang up the mic, are y'all going to do a Kobe retirement tour or tell us all of a sudden like Brady? I think Please we're never retire. I have nightmares of this hypothetical. Wait, when Brady retired, he retired and then he came back though. Remember? True. We I, So we talked about this with Cam and Brandon Marshall about doing a tour. I've always thought in my head that like when we do end up hanging up the cleats, we're going to do like a sellout like Aerosmith when they're like 75 tour. Or we and could, we're just going to be like, yeah, we're going to make like Twenty million dollars being washed up podcasters doing like one final tour. We could do the kiss version of that, which is we you do, do, so you do many that drugs tour. On that tour, you do that tour like five times in a row, where you're like, "This is the retirement tour." Yeah. Then you come back, retire again. Then you come back, retire again. What if we did one final tour and it was the drugs only tour? And we died at the last episode. We we're just like every like man, these guys are they got to get off the road. Yeah. It's it's killing them. I mean, AI is going to take over for this podcast eventually. Yeah, no, we we I don't think we would do a um that would be crazy if we just did a all right, and that's the last episode. I don't think we'd do that. I think it would it would be a, a much more calculated landing the plane. But that's not a problem we have to think about right now. Although we're going on year eight. It's crazy. You're into a decade. It's like whoo odd years, that's yeah. that's fifty years. Yeah, we don't know what 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 podcasting no, is. Podcast about bodies, cigarettes. Also, this is we about to know. be a leap year, We're, so it's going to be the actual anniversary. Yes, November yeah. 29th. Yes, year it's two. About to be your second year. Yeah. No podcast. It's like it's like cigarettes in the fifties. Like everyone did them. No yeah, and realized. they didn't know what 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 the effect was. So in like twenty years, everyone that has a podcast, they're going to have like like they podcast it every day. Yeah, yeah, they're going to have like a brain tumor. Yeah, hunched over, can't hear. Fat. And, be, and we'll, like, Bob Lee will come back and be like, these podcasters put their lives on the line. I would not let my son be a podcaster. Nope. Nope. I'd let him be a TikTok star. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing. Get him started early. Uh, memes wrote the, or memes sent these questions, but this one says, hey, PMT, just wanted to ask what your thoughts were on Hanky Hazards beating PFD in the money, money, money oh. match. Oh, interesting. I don't and think what else we can expect? I was a witness. Series. Yeah, Jake. So Nobody won. No one won. It was a tie. I won the match. We Double tied, or nothing, though, right? We tied 0-0. Zero, zero. And then I you won went the double match. Or nothing. Then we went double or nothing. Won that. <laughs> then we went triple or nothing. And, and you lost that. Lost, lost that. that. Oh, so you yeah. didn't. So no one won. So I owed Hank zero dollars, and Hank owed me zero dollars. So no one won. No one. But won. I won the match. It was a good matchup. It was. Fun. How bad did you win it, or how much did you win? By? Six holes. Yeah, wow. Hank won it by a considerable amount. Hank does spend all his time on that simulator. He does, and he knew how to putt. I didn't know how to putt until like the last five holes when Jake had to step in and show me how to aim on the simulator, which Hank knew because he plays it all the time. Also, Hank selected the golf course, which was very, very Cleared suited. It by you. I had you just said, "Hey, do you want to play this course?" And call shout it out Dan Earl, like, he yeah. played it. <laughs> yes. So yeah, Hank Hank had a course of his choosing. It was a home field advantage for him, and we tied. Every Sunday we come in to watch football and Hank bets some crazy uh, hungry dog parlay and watches one quarter and sees his team suck and then just goes to the simulator. I can't express how bad my gambling has been this year. Like losing. It's, it's, it's. And you used to be good. Yeah, I used to have fun. And now it's, it's like I'm, the season's over. Yeah. I keep being like, well, maybe I'll have a good week and get back into it. Yeah. And then I don't, and then it just gets worse. You should just so ride. You should just ride the gremlin over three and a half field goal bet. It's the only bet that's kept me afloat the last like three years. I need like a fifteen legger. Okay. See, that's we'll your problem. Like this, this is a money maker. I don't know why more people don't bet it. It makes money for me. I suck at gambling. Besides that, and that's that's really made. You should you should just bet the Niners against the Eagles like I did. I bet the Eagles. How are we oh dog? no. Um. Big Cat, PFT, Honk, Loser, Max, Jake, and Memes. 
What is one game or sports moment that happened before the PMT was founded that you Ooh. wish you guys could have reacted or covered on the pod? Malice Ooh. at the Palace. Also, I ride with Hank, yes. firm believer in the lighthouse. Malice at the Palace is the answer. It would have been incredible. Malice at the Palace is the answer. Yeah. Because it also would be like, you can't pick like specific to our own teams because then it's, you know, like it, something that is like a national that that and Manti Teo would have been awesome. It would have been crazy. For Manti sure. Teo would have been, Tiger Woods would have been awesome. Yeah, the the Thanksgiving. Yes, uh -huh. that would have been incredible. And the text that got leaked afterwards. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah. Yes. We would have done dramatic readings of those. But I think Malice in the Palace, if we had like recorded right after Malice in the Palace, would have been incredible. Cubs guy. You're talking about Bartman, Steve Bartman. Yeah. yeah no, I'm I'm saying that like taking out specific things to each but, ourselves. But aside for, aside from you, just like oh in yeah, general, that would be as, yes, like a, a yes. show thing that would have been crazy. yes, yes. Villanova, buzzer beater. Yeah, I mean that. Well, but we were doing the pod then. Yeah, it was no. like a month in. It was 2016, April of 2016. Yeah, yeah. There's some good ones though. Malice at the Palace would have been just all time, all time. Lin so Sanity. many funny. Lin Sanity would have been yeah. fun. We would have, we would have, we would have thought Lin, Lin Sanity would have lasted forever. We would have been very wrong about LeBron's that. first title would have been tough for you guys. Oh, I wouldn't have potted. I would have loved that. <laughs> I wouldn't have potted. You mean Dwayne Wade's first title? Yeah. Second well, title? Ashes. Second title? Uh, all right, Hank. What else? 18-1 and one for Hank would have been, oh, my God. Oh, that would have been the best. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, no, that was a second. I mean, what about, what about... Aaron Boone? No, what about fucking Eagles Patriots first Super Bowl would have been great. That would have been awesome, too, yeah. That would have been awesome. Or even the second one, because Max wasn't on the show yet. That might be the answer. And the Philly special. Oh, yeah. you would have been so <laughs> mad at Matt. That would have been insane. Holy <laughs> fuck. I think that might be the number one answer. Uh, all right, last one. Big fan. Appreciate all the content you guys bring us, AWLs. I would love to know the most holy shit moment when the podcast was first starting. Mm -hmm. You realize this is bigger than we ever thought it could be, whether it was guests you were able to get on or even a single notable person that told you they are a listener. Whatever it is, thanks again for all you guys do. PFT rooting for you and surviving Barstool. If you come at the king, you best not miss. Yeah, we're all we're all rooting for PFT at yeah. this point. It was fun. It was fun. Actually, so I don't know what the first holy shit moment. I always go back to like Joe Buck or Scott Van Pelt. I think going to Bristol and getting to interview Scott Van Pelt because we obviously were friends with him, but like that was a big one. I have them all the time though, like so I can tell this story now. When we did Surviving Barstool, everyone go buy it. Um, not really a spoiler. I was eliminated in four hours, so I went to stay at a hotel all week. And at the hotel, the Celtics were staying at the hotel, and I was in an elevator with Derek White, and I felt like such a loser because I was like, I was like, I recognize him, and uh, I was like, yeah, like, oh, you guys got a game, and I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I have a podcast, and uh, m my producer's like a huge Celtics fan, and he was just like, yeah, I listen to your podcast all the time. I was like, fuck yeah, dude, that's very, that's cool. fucking awesome. So he's gonna come on the show, but those moments, like, whenever. Whenever an athlete says they listen, it still kind of blows me away. For me, it was uh, first Super Bowl that we covered. That was in Houston, right? Mm -hmm. The Houston Super Bowl. Um, at the Barstool party, Guy Fieri was there. Yeah. And Guy Fieri was like, hey, man, I love part of my take. And I was like, that is that's pretty That good. is pretty cool. That's pretty fucking Like, good. I can just die right now. God, Guy knows who I am. Yeah. What about you, Hank? I have them all the time. I mean, any athlete, like, it's different for you guys because you're the host, but any athlete that recognizes me or, like, you know, I go to introduce myself and I'm like, oh, what's up, Hank? And I'm just like, Whoa. that's the thing. What yeah. The like, fuck? when an athlete knows us, it doesn't go away. That part does not go away where I'm still like, what the fuck? Especially now with the some of the, like, even like the Will Levises of the world who are like, they've been listening since they were in high school. Mm -hmm. Oh, Will Levis told us when we went to we went to dinner with him at, uh, in Kentucky during the Breeders' Cup. It was like me, Dave, Jerry, Elio, and he was like, yeah, I was playing Guess That Ass when I was like 13. Yeah, so the people, <laughs> I was like, cool. The people that have kind of come up, even like, cause like, cause Jared was a, was was a fan of Barcelona when the podcast first first started, which was kind of crazy because he just got drafted number one and was like hitting hitting you up, being like, yeah, like come out and stuff. yeah, come like, party, yeah. Fuck, you just got drafted number one and and you he's wanna, been in like, the NFL for like eight years, yeah. But that was he was more just a fan of Barcelona. But there's now people that are fans of the podcast that are like coming up and and pros and stuff, and it's like holy shit. We've been doing this for a while. It is one of those things that I, I'm happy that we haven't gotten jaded in this respect because it really does, like, it still does, it still is the coolest thing ever. Whenever, like, a, someone who plays sports or manages or whatever, coaches, is like, oh, hey, I'm a fan of you. I'm like, 
Really? For me, it was. This uh, is fucking cool. Just crazy people listen. I always, I still tell my, I, I just assume people don't listen. Yeah, I know, right? Otherwise, it's the it's weirdest like, no, thing. It'll it fuck in, with I your head, anxiety. right? Some it, of the Spotify said, rap yeah. numbers and stuff you see. Yeah, I'm like, oh fuck, people, what the people fuck? like to hang with us, and it's, I mean, awesome. When we saw, when we saw our golf head cover on Charlie Woods' bag, that was a big moment for me. Yeah, that was like. But it's good though because it really would suck if we got to a point where we're like, if like an athlete, like if Derek White was like, yeah, I listen, I'd be like. Of course he does. Like that would suck. Yeah, Derek, I mean, well, like, hey, can I like, get a picture? Uh, yeah, be not, like, not time right to now. hang it up. Like, you can't get excited about this. Like, I was legitimately excited. I told you right away. So like, I saw Derek White. He listens, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. um, Derek White. Another holy shit moment. It might have been Blake. First so couple months of Blake it was a uh, the the podcast that we had with Marlins Man and Foul Ball Guy. Oh, Marlins getting Man. both those guys on the show at the same time. Yeah, I mean that is it was. I knew we had something special. Marlon's man texting me. Um, let's see. I oh, here we go. Phone call the day after. Still the funniest. <laughs> yeah. Marlon's man texted me. This is like, pretty. Yeah, you got to listen to this. And he was like, he was saying he was going to sue me. <laughs> um, this like, is threatening me. Also, when I hung out with Marlon's man and he took me up to like his condo in Miami and then pointed out at the all the different properties that he owned along the beach. Yeah. And I didn't know if I was going to leave that hotel room or not Yeah, for about, like, 15 minutes. That's cool. That was pretty cool. Um, Marlon's been texting me. This is pretty breaking news. We can cut this if we don't want to put it in, uh, Max and memes. Uh, Marlon's been texting me, although Dolphins 9-3, and three, all three losses against teams with winning records, and I think all nine wins against teams with losing or 500 records, FYI. Okay. Yeah. We should pretty, cut that. Pretty big stat. We, we yeah, we that. should probably cut that. Nerd I don't idea. know if anyone else knows that. Mm -hmm. I liked getting that random text from Marlins. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a graphic on the TV when they were playing on Sunday. It was. Cowboys. It was that weird one where Mike McDaniel was like jumping over like hurdles. Hey, don't the Cowboys have a pretty similar stat? Yeah. Yeah. They need to. They need to beat someone. I mean, they beat the Seahawks. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good show, boys. Tune into the the 24 hour stream starting at nine o'clock. Central. 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 You sure you don't want to go to eight? Part of my take YouTube. We can go eight. And Twitch. Let's go eight. No? Max is saying no. Okay. Nine o'clock. Uh, okay. Numbers. I get this. Three. 18. 71. Want to switch spots if I get this? Pub 27. Eight. PFT. Did you hear what he said? We'll split oh, oh. 12 hours. All right. Oh. And I'll match. No, I'll right, do 12. Deal. I'll do 12. No, it's just for Hank. What the fuck? 27, you said? If Hank gets it. PFT and I will both do 12 hours and Hank is out. 17. Wow. Come on. Actually, 40, 40, 40, 40. Oh, oh no. I'm going to take 17. Yeah. Oh. I have 17. And what if you guys get it? Uh, shut up, Jake. Good good boy. Shut the fuck up. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's it's got to be fair. Team. Shut up. 40. 3. 71. What is your guess, me Max? In 20. The Evan has 27. 3. And, and memes? Three. Oh, 62. Man, 17 would have rocked. That would have been awesome. All right. See everyone. 24 hours. Partofmyballs.com. Love you guys.